are you ready for some football? Welcome back to the 2023 football season. James Kobaleski here, joined by Jason Gray and Justin Juice Nichols. And gentlemen, we spent a good, about a good two hours here waiting for a long lightning delay, but the players are out in the field and they're ready to go. Jason, what are your feelings coming in here as we are just minutes away from the 2023 kick? Well, uh, I like this ball club again. I think the defense is going to be very strong. Uh, the offense, I really like uh, Salters at quarterback. He had a lot of experience last year when Chase Goodwin was out with an arm injury. And uh, the running game, I think this year should be improved. Uh, with the, I think that uh, Cooper Gindorf, uh, Gindorf has the opportunity to, to break off longer runs than maybe we've seen in the last couple of years. And uh, pretty excited. I think Vegas has got – what's Vegas have, Juice? Vegas uh I think Vegas got a push. Vegas has a push. Okay. <laughs> well, you, you're probably not, not far from being right there, Juice, because over the past – this is the sixth consecutive meeting here between these two teams. No greater than a five-point differential in the past five meetings. Yeah, it always wow. comes down to one possession. These teams are both evenly matched uh, from the student body all the way up. Academically, they're basically the same schools. So it's always really interesting to see these guys get after it. You know, Seven Lakes got these two great running backs. It's going to be interesting to see how – Memorial stops these guys. Memorial, the Mustangs come back with only two starters back on defense. Got a ton of young talent, but it's going to see how, how they mix it up. And let's talk about one of those starters. James Klingberg, number 86, the big defensive end. Jason, I know that you know we were kind of talking in pregame uh, about the Mustang defense. What, what's going to be the difference here having a big, experienced, returning guy like Klingberg up front? Uh, he does have a lot of experience. Uh, he played a lot last year, um, obviously. Uh, these guys just play physical. They, they all play a lot bigger than they are. And Klingberg, you know, is a big guy for this squad, but he's not he's not enormous, you know, relative to some of the competition we're going to see. And uh, But, boy, he, he plays like a big guy. And, Juice, Memorial High School is kind of becoming a little bit of an Ivy League pipeline. He sent Chase Goodwin out to New York City to play for the Columbia Lions this uh, coming season. Max Wang, the big six foot five, 300-pound right tackle, he's committed to Harvard. I mean, are we starting to get a little Ivy League pipeline here in the Mustang football team? Well, it's been happening quite a bit. You know, not only in football, they had a couple kids for baseball, got a couple kids play for Vanderbilt or golf. Uh, so it's it's been a long pipeline to the better school. So it's good to see him have that type of success. And no talk about the Memorial, Memorial Mustangs would be complete about talking about Gary Koch entering his 31st year of coaching. Unbelievable. What, what's it like for you guys being from the Memorial community, uh, Jason? What's it like having a guy who's been at the helm for over 30 years? Man, he loves it. Uh, he has been – and Memorial wasn't his first stop. He was at Stratford before that. And he's been coaching a very long time. And, I mean, he's not looking to retire, I don't think. He doesn't act like a guy who looks like he's tired of He this. does not. <laughs> <laughs> and let's turn our attention a little bit to the home team here, the Seven Lakes Spartans. Juice mentioned it. They have a two-headed monster at running back, two seniors, Barrett Hudson and Jake Ferris. Combined, they went over 1,000 yards last year, over 10 touchdowns. Uh, uh, Hudson actually missed quite a bit of the season of injury, but he's back now at full strength. How are we going to stop this run game tonight out of the Seven Lakes Spartans? Well, Coach, you know they're going to have to be because, you know, they're starting a sophomore at quarterback, so that's going to be a challenge. They're going to have to rely on those seniors to carry them forward here. They're going to go up against an experienced defense, and hopefully for Seven Lakes they'll get their ground game going early and make a difference and take a little pressure off that sophomore quarterback. And we kind of touched on the quarterback battle a little bit. You mentioned Jackson Salter. has got some really big, meaningful reps in the game against Side Creek. I remember him being out there after Chase Goodwin went down. So, Jason, what do you, what do you think it's going to take for, for Salters tonight, his first full year as a starter, uh, for him to have a great night tonight? The only real live action I saw was uh, last week where uh, Memorial, except for last year's junior year. But this year so far I've seen them play over at uh, North Shore in a, in a very – very intensive uh, scrimmage game and he looked really good as guys were getting open um, you know he he stands back there just solid he's 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 really big from the waist down he's got the uh, he's, he's got the big legs you can just see how stable he is when he stands back there he does, nothing seems to rattle him when he gets around so he's always throwing from a good position uh, if his guys get open I think he's gonna have a big a big night a big night and last question I have for you guys here in the pregame show. You've both been involved in coaching at the youth level, you know, for the Spring Branch Youth Football Association. You see these guys go all the way from Pee Wee to playing under the Friday night lights and the Thursday night lights here tonight. What, what's that like for you guys as, as former coaches to see your kids come up and play in, in the big time here? Uh, it's funny. It's not the kids you think it's going to be when they're eight or nine. Sure. It, yeah. is, it is so crazy to see uh, some of these kids that you didn't think 
uh, you know, we're, we're very athletic, we're going to be big and strong, and suddenly they're big, strong, fast, and, and tearing people's heads off. And I mean, maybe that's just my inability to see it at a younger age. But uh, that, that's been the, the, the most fun part for me is watching some of these guys I never would have thought would still be playing football. And not only are they playing, they're, they're doing really well. Yeah, it's very rewarding to see all these kids because when you think about it, you tell these parents when you're coaching 9 to 10 years old, and it's hard for them to believe, but, like, if your kid's just a starting high school linebacker, he's an unbelievable player, right? Absolutely. And so I think the parents kind of lose focus on that. And so it's good to see some of these kids we've known really since they were 7, 8 years old. So it's been really pleasant to watch them play, and it's going to be interesting to see how they do this season. We are just moments away from kickoff. The Seven Lakes Band has remained. They are filing back in. I think the Mustang Band may have headed back east on I-10 just because of the weather and their longer trip home. So I don't see them, but there is the student section. The bums, the bums and the babes have made an appearance <laughs> the here. Bums is that the, the, babes. the bums and the babes. Okay. The, yeah. the bums are the guys with a hard hat, yeah. and they uh, enjoyed a little extra tailgating here this evening yeah. for sure. I'm not sure how much Ivy League talent is sitting over there across the field. <laughs> a little SEC for sure. <laughs> <laughs> they had a full two hours of tailgating. You're, you're right about that. Correct. We're going to bring you all ten games this season of Mustang football. We would like to thank the families of MHS football. And we'd also like to thank, uh, thank Brandon Bohm with Texas Tea Tavern, 1535 Britmore Road, Houston, Texas. A roomy, sports-centric hangout with cold drinks. Perfect for a, a little bit of tailgating before the game over before you head out to Tully. Cold drinks and a patio, plus live music, pool tables, and grub. The perfect post-game hangout for a Mustang victory. Maybe if they get the victory tonight, people can have, head out to Texas Tea. It's also a great pre-game place for Baseball USA. you got the little 9-year-old, <laughs> 98-degree heat out there. All right, so here we go. The Mustangs are going to head back to their sideline. Again, we're under a little bit of an abbreviated schedule here because of the big delay. So the Mustangs are going straight to their sideline. Looks like Seven Lakes is going to kick their last extra point. Now they are heading straight to the sideline. We are just moments away. We'll step away for a quick break, and we'll be right back with the opening kickoff. Seven Lakes versus the Memorial Mustangs here on Vibe.
All right, and welcome back. Beautiful rendition of the National Anthem by the Seven Lakes High School Choir, and we are just moments away. Your starters tonight for your Mustangs on offense at tight end, number 37, William Fowler. Left tackle, number 56, Blake Ratliff. Left guard, number 68, Harrison Rabel. The center, number 76, Oliver Schofield. At right guard, number 72, Donald Mafridge. At right tackle, number 79, Max Wang. At quarterback, number 5, Jackson Salters. At the tomback. And I think that's the fullback, maybe Coach Koch's uh, vernacular there. But at Tomback, number 29, Jackson Graham. The tailback tonight, number 25, the speedy Cooper Gindorf. At split end, number 12, Luke Baum. And at flanker, number 20, Co Trednick. And the looks like the kickoff team is out here for the Mustangs. They'll be playing defense first. Out to kick, number 28, Matthew Lewis. Yeah, Matt Lewis got a good leg here. But I'll tell you what, we lucky a little... Earlier, the wind was going about 25 to 30 miles an hour. It's looked like it's calmed down here. Seven Lakes is going to take this kick here, and we're going to get this football season started. All right, so we'll have the defense out first, and as soon as we complete this kick, I'll read you the defensive starters, and we'll be ready to rock and roll. Lewis breaks the kickoff team. Ball set up in the middle of the field at the 40. Back deep, it looks like that's Jake Ferris back there at the bottom of your screen. That's, the, that's one of the two-headed monster running back. He's one of the returners back deep to return. All right, gentlemen, here we go. We are underway. underway. 2023 football season for the Mustangs. Is the kick will go into the back of the end zone. So our starters defensively for your Mustangs at outside linebacker, number 42, Eddie G, Eddie Gray. Kid lives in my street. <laughs> <laughs> number 86, the big defensive end, James Klingberg. At nose guard, number 59, Miles Reitman. The other defensive end, number 81, Koston Teramiji. The linebacker, number 19, the junior, Mason Riddle. At uh, other inside linebacker, number 35, Cade West. Outside linebacker, number 39, Mitch Ottenreit. At corner, number 8, Jake Wilburn. And the other corner is number 24, Monty Self. And the safeties tonight, Matt, Matthew Lewis, kicking and playing safety. And Anderson Strait is your other safety. Here we go. Here come the Spartans. Fullback, Gary Dang, kind of in a wing set up top. Two receivers to the bottom of your screen. 3-4 defense for the Mustangs. Under center is Sean Patel, going to send a receiver in motion going to fake the jet handoff. He's looking to throw the post. Complete. The pass is complete to number 88, the sophomore on the first play of the game. That's a sophomore, number 88, Ryan Fowler. Well, there's any doubt that Patel could throw the football. He put that ball right on the spot. Memorial's coverage is about a yard and a half behind him. I don't think they were expecting a big pass play like that on the first play of the ball game. And boy, they really made it count. Coach Hammond rolls the dice. You can see flags fly. The, the Spartans are going to get a celebration penalty. but I think they'll live with that one. Yeah, no no doubt, Juice. After going for a 1-9 season, I think these players are just so pent up that they wanted to, to prove something, and that's a great start. You know, it was an outstanding call. And, you know, last night in the JV game, they did a throwback pass, and they were able to score. So that's two nights in a row they burned the Mustangs on a long play. Kind of uncharacteristic of a you know, Gary Koch-led defense for just kind of safeties, maybe looking in the backfield a little bit. and A little bit. You, would you know, you expect a safe play on the first play of the game. Right. you got to give the Spartans credit. They went for it all, and yeah, they little... certainly executed. The kid made a great catch. Yeah, Coach Coach was thinking psychologically there, I guess. He thought everybody might be amped up and bite on that fake handoff. Yeah. Boy, that was a good throw. That was yeah. a really nice just throw. Just a great throw by, by Patel. Well, our uh, team ERA isn't looking very good right now. <laughs> well. Astros know about that today, for sure. <laughs> no, I saw it was a 17 to 1 or something. <laughs> All right. Looks like out to attempt the kick is the junior kicker, number 28, Alex Farinez. Mustang is going to see if they can block the kick here and try to keep this at a six point differential. Snap is good. The hole's down. There's pressure. That might have been Klingberg coming through there. Yes, Klingberg got some penetration, but couldn't quite get there. So our score, just nine seconds into the first quarter, Spartan 7. Memorial Zero here on Vibe.
All right, welcome back. If you're just joining us, the Spartans went play action on the first play, scored a uh, seven-yard touchdown, and due to the excessive celebration penalty, Farinaz will be kicking off from his own 25-yard line. So it's going to be good field position here for the Mustangs. Can't tell if it's Jake Wilburn or Carson Wall back there deep to return. There's a kick. Going to get great field position. Going to be fielded at the 30 on the run, working inside to the middle. There's a seam! He's oh, got a chance to go! Isaac Richardson gets past Farinaz! And he's going to go to the house! I'll tell you what, the Spartans kicked to the wrong guy. Isaac Richardson's literally been doing that his whole life. Me and Jason had so much experience watching that. And it doesn't really matter what level, Jason. Same old results. That was one of the kids you thought was always going to be special. And I think he's always going to be special. Pretty special right there. I'll tell you what, nice bounce back. We've watched uh, two, three plays in this ball games with two scores. Wow, yeah, we're 20 seconds into this game. We've got two scores. And good job by the Memorial coaching staff. They held their players back from celebrating after the emotional play. So there will be no penalty for the Mustangs. That penalty really came back to hurt the Spartans. It no, really it was did. because it was a short kind of a sky kick. And you, you know, you never know a guy like that on the side is going to have that type of speed. And they kicked it to the wrong fella. All right. The safety slash kicker, the Mr. Do-It-All, Matthew Lewis, set to attempt the extra point. Salters to hold. Good snap. Hold is down. Kick is away. And it is good. Our score. With 11.40 left to go in the first quarter, we are knotted at 7 apiece here on Vibe. All right, welcome back. If you're just joining us, you've missed a lot. You've missed two scores just here in the first uh, 20 seconds of this game. It's fantastic, exciting. You know, these kids have been practicing every day in the morning, waking up early, getting to school 5 to 5.30, and uh, waited two hours to play this football game. 9 o'clock kick, and uh, I've got to tell you, it hasn't disappointed thus far. All right, Matthew Lewis set to kick again, and the strength of Matthew Lewis's leg is huge. He kicked it into the end zone on the opening kickoff, and you saw you need a strong, ki you need a strong kickoff, seven lakes. Uh, giving up the kickoff return on the second play of the game. And the kick is away. Doesn't get quite as much into it this time. It's going to be returned. That's Jake Ferris catching it at the one-yard line. And he is going to be wrapped up by number 52 for the Mustangs, Jacob Miller. Great tackle by Miller there. Lewis, you know, hung that first kick all the way in the back of the end zone. They were able to get a good jump on it right there at the two-yard line. It's going to be interesting to see if Seven Lakes goes back to that two-headed running game right here. And Coach Cripps and the Memorial Mustangs see if they can bounce back on defense. Yeah, defensive coordinator uh, Craig Cripps, of course, the son of legendary longtime state winning coach at Stratford, Oscar Cripps. And, of course, then his brother Keith is the head football coach at Springwood, so the, the Cripps family tradition alive in Spring Branch. Here come the Spartans. I, I agree with you, Juice. I think they're going to go to the ground here. I think that they proved their point through the air, but they, they want to establish the run. Well, they're going to keep Memorial honest for sure. Let's see where it goes. All right, one back in the backfield. Two tight ends up top. Interesting formation here. Got a tight end and a tight end and a wing. That's uh, Barrett Hudson in the backfield. Motion across the formation. They're going to run a stretch play to Hudson. Going to get around the edge, get around the safety, trying to tiptoe down the sideline. There's going to be a, a holding call there on the wide receiver. So that one will come back. Wow, that was behind the play too. Well, Hudson showed his speed there. Jason, when they trot that tight end over there, it's almost like they're going jumbo left or right, but they put him in motion there and did a good job of getting to the edge. Memorial was fortunate to get that penalty. That was a big play. I bet they were very fortunate to get that penalty. So that'll back the Spartans oh, up. He was, that would have been, what, an 18-yard gain? Yeah, that was a nice play there on their first play, uh, second play from scrimmage. It's a spot foul, so it won't be that dire. You know, it's going to be only first and 14 for the Spartans. Juice, what does Harris say about the over-under on this game? I don't know, man. Let's go over. The weekend moneymakers will know what to do. <laughs> 
Well, Lad, Lad Brooks has it a thousand to one that Max Wang's going to make a field goal tonight. Let's do it. All righty, here we go. <laughs> Tight end and a wing at the bottom of your screen. Two receivers up top. Mustangs adjusting here at the bottom of your screen. That's Riddle screwing down on the tight end there. They're going to run a bootleg. Oh, the ball's deflected by Riddle. Let's see if they're going to they're going to rule that incomplete. A little bit of a late decision there mm. by the uh, head official, but he's going to call that one incomplete, going to bring up a second down. Riddle just did a great job of getting penetration there. You know, he's a second-year starter, a junior. He's always been a great athlete. He's a big physical kid, and he made his presence felt. He is. Look, he could play quarterback for nearly anybody. I think they put him on defense because he – at quarterback, he just wanted to keep running into people. No doubt. He's just a physical kid. <laughs> he is a physical kid. So Seven Lakes, just three plays in, already passing the ball twice. They were able to get a pretty good gain on, on their first run, but it was negated by a penalty. We'll see what they do here. A little bit of a spread set, two receivers up top, one to the bottom of your screen. It's going to be interesting to see if Memorial pins their ears and go back and get him here. Second and I'd call it 11. Okay, if that was an incomplete pass, how is it second and 11? Like the penalty on the first down made, made it there uh, from the holding, correct. yeah. Yep. All right, going to just do a three-step drop back. Going to throw the hitch complete. I think that's number 12. Kind of hard to see the number. I believe that's Owen Wade, the junior wide receiver. Great job of coverage by the Mustangs there. It gave up the two- or three-yard game, but you'll take that all day long. You know, it's going to put the Spartans in a third, third and eight situation. Clock's running here with 10.55 left in the – First quarter, and we already have a 7-7 ball game. Good zip on that ball there from uh, Sean Patel. The sophomore has really kind of shown some some nerves of steel here in his he, first start. He looks like he has a lot of moxie, too. I mean, he's under control, and it doesn't look like it, the moment is too big for him. I agree. He doesn't look like a really big guy from here. He's a, mm. But, boy, he really does get a lot on the ball. Okay, spread formation. First time the Spartans go without a tight end. You're going to spread him out into the slot. Three-man rush. A fourth rusher coming late, stepping up as Patel, and he will go down. Ball came out but recovered. It looked like a combination of Klingberg and number 81, Kostin Teramiji, combining on the sack. Klingberg and Teramiji just absolutely squeezed down and made a huge hit right there. It caused the fumble. The Spartans are very fortunate to get that ball back, and Klingberg just you know, showed his presence right there. Big physical kid with deep penetration. I believe back to punt for the Spartans will be number 16, Colin Mills. And special teams will be important. The Mustangs got that huge kickoff return. We'll see what they can do here. Good snap. Kick is away. Good, Pretty good kick there. Going to drive back the returner. It's going to field it at the 38-yard line. That's number nine, Carson Ooh. Wall. He's got the edge! Carson Wall going to be brought down. Nice return there by Carson Wall. Yeah, great speed, great setup. They made a good tackle on that one play, too. Right there, Seven Lakes was fortunate to get down and close on wall pretty quickly there. But, you know, that was one of those cases where I think he kind of outkicked his coverage. This is a fantastic punt. Wall picked up a really good block there when he caught the ball from Eddie Gray. If, if we can see it again on the jumbo trot, uh, it, it's worth mentioning. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Coach. This is uh, Memorial's first play on offense, right? This, this, you are correct. <laughs> we are 932 into the first quarter here. Here come the Mustangs. Our first look at Jackson Salters and Cooper Gindorf in the backfield. Tight end to the bottom of your screen. And that's number 37, William Fowler. Two receivers up top. 3-4 defense. It's motion across the formation. Oh, They're going to look on the quick out route. Complete. That is to number 12 for the Mustangs, Luke Bohm. I would like to see that snap get back to the quarterback a little quicker. I noticed that last week uh, during the, during the uh, scrimmage against North Shore. And to me, it looks like the backs and the quarterback are having, having trouble with their fakes because the back is gone. All right. Salter is going to have, looks like, kind of two uh, up backs here with Gindorf joining him in the backfield. They're going to just run a zone play leading up inside. Gindorf yep. running tough. Man, good tough running by Gindorf there. Mustangs did a good job of getting physical up front, but uh, Gindorf just really made it happen there. Don't let that kid get on the perimeter. He can get in the end zone quickly. Yeah, I saw number 72, Donald Mafridge, doing a good job getting up to the linebacker and making a nice block there. So, A couple newer players uh, on the Mustangs O-line. Of course, Max Wang, the, the senior, the returner. But a couple new guys up there, and they're looking good early. Good, good movement there on that second down play. Yeah, one of those guys we coached for a long time, Harrison Rabel, sophomore starting off left guard for the Stangs, doing a good job. That's a solid kid. Fowler, short 
motion. They're going to pull the uh, back around. They're going to lead up in the hole, and that's going to be good enough for a first down. Pretty pretty stout defense there out of the Spartans, but Gindorf is going to power his way for a first down. Uh, the Spartans did a great job on defense right there. Uh, it was Fowler, the linebacker, that stepped up and made a heck of a play. And, you know, it was only third and a foot, so that's but that's about all they got was a foot. All right, Mustangs going no huddle. They're looking to the sideline to get the play call. Clock's running. That's how Coach Koch likes it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Coach Koch known. And all these games are usually in the 17 to 13 range or typically low scoring. So it was odd to see all that scoring in the first opening minute of the game. Here we go. First and 10. Motion across the formation. Salter's calling signals. He's going to drop back to pass. He's got time. Intercepted. That's the inside linebacker, number 32 for the Spartans, Justin Fowler, the junior, steps in front, and that is a big play for the Spartans. Yeah, Fowler made back-to-back -back plays. He was in on that tackle, and he made an interception. He just dropped back to his 12-yard 12, you know, 12 hook right there, and, and Salters let that ball float on him just a little bit and got away. And I tell you what, he made a great play because the Mustangs were driving, and that was a big stop for Seven Lakes. The skirmish on the sidelines after the play. Yeah, there was a a, a big block was thrown. Right at the yeah. whistle. Mm. Right at the whistle, and yep. a teammate came over to help out, and suddenly everybody was helping out. Well, that's part of football. Yeah, I mean, I, I've watched this rivalry for, you know, it's been going the past six years. It, it, it's hard and physical, but also typically clean, and we don't see a lot of, you know, stuff after the whistle or anything like that. But these guys are playing hard for sure. All right, so the sophomore, Sean Patel. Going to start another drive here. He's going to get another chance. It's going to be interesting to see if they're going to start relying on their running game. They, you know, they... Oh, no, we have a weather delay. Not another oh, my weather goodness. delay. All right, yeah. Sorry to cut you off there, Juice, but we'll, the players are going to head off. But we'll go ahead and let you finish that thought, and I guess we'll step away for another weather delay. No, they ran that stretch play one time and got outside the perimeter. But they, unfortunately for the Spartans, they had a big holding call in that play. And they're going to have to rely on these running backs to make it happen. But I'll tell you what, the surprise of the game probably is the steadiness of Patel for seven lakes so far. Agreed. All right, so just to fill in our listening audience, anytime there is a lightning strike, and that, that is what's happened, there's been a lightning strike in the area, that will set the timer to 30 minutes. We must go 30 minutes without experiencing another lightning strike in the area for the players to return to the field. So you can go ahead and step away. If you, if you live uh, somewhere near Britmore, you can head down to Texas Tea Tavern, maybe just hang out for a half hour and come right back. But we will be back in it. Minimum of 30 minutes uh, for the, the, the remainder of this game. With 7.21 left to go in the first quarter, we are tied at 7 here on Vipe.
All right, we are back. So the players have kind of they've they've completed their warm up in the locker room staging area, and so they're kind of just coming to the sideline. There will be no actual warm up. It looks like so. We will return to play. James Kovaleski here, uh, joined with by Jason Gray and Justin Juice Nichols. And Juice is just telling me kind of the history of the bums and the babes. Said it's a since 1950s. You're saying kind of the tradition started. Well, it's been around as long as I can remember. And I tell you what, they got a great turnout tonight. None of them have left. I guess none of them yeah. are too concerned about the academic day tomorrow, and that's okay. <laughs> awesome. Very very cool to see. Yeah, they they are dedicated. They came out in force and. The Spartan Crazies are the Seven Lakes equivalent. They're also down there on the home sideline. So it's just really great to see the, the students coming out here and supporting their schools. And Seven Lakes has a fantastic crowd out there. We just walked through it just a second ago. I'll tell you what, they have a ton of folks here. Absolutely. And, man, Juice, it's been so long. I almost forget who's on. I, look, I guess Seven Lakes is returning to begin a drive. Uh, so Sean Patel, the sophomore quarterback, he's been impressive to you. I know you've been kind of singing his praises. No, he's had a great outing so far. He made the big throw to start off the ball game. Kind of caught the Memorial second there a little bit off guard, and that was a big play. But Memorial struck right back with Isaac Richardson on the kickoff return. And the linebacker for Seven Lakes has just done a fantastic job. Made two plays. He had the interception. Um, that, was at a that was number 32, the Fowler. junior, Justin Fowler. Yeah, he's a, he, we knew he was going to be a good ball player coming into the game, speaking to the coaches, and he, he showed up big so far. Interesting to see how they're going to play this out here. I guess most of the warm-up's been done below in the tunnel here. This, mm -hmm. If you've never been to Legacy Field, I'll tell you, Coach, it's an amazing mm -hmm. facility. It seems like it's uh, worth every nickel they spent here. <laughs> Absolutely, and here we go. The wait is over. Let's hope that was the last delay. That was our second delay of the evening. But here comes Seven Lakes. They're going to come out in their pro formation. The fullback, Gary Dang, offset strong to the bottom of your screen, along with the tight end. 3-4 defense out of the Mustangs. Motion by the fullback. They're going to run a stretch play inside there to make the tackle is number 35, Cade West. Yeah, Cade West did a great job there. Second, so, you know, Seven Lakes coming here trying to establish a running game a little bit right there after that big throw of the start to ball game. But the Mustang defense held up nice there for looks like about a two-yard gain. And Cade West is one of your captains tonight. So the four captains for the 2023 season are all seniors. Cade West, the inside linebacker. Jackson Graham, uh, the tomback, Max Wang, the right tackle, and James Klingberg, the defensive end, are your captains for the 2023 season. Yeah, Klingberg's already made his presence here. All right, tight end and wing to the bottom of your screen. Patel under center. There's the fake. Going to run the bootleg, trying to throw the corner out. And that's going to be broken up. I believe that was Matthew. You Lewis, Matthew Lewis on the pass breakup. Yeah, Matt Lewis, the kicker slash safety, did a great job. They kind of redeemed themselves from early in the ball game. That was a big stop there. Patel almost had him open, but uh, Mustang defense comes up big. That'll make it third down. Okay, third down and eight to go. And kind of interesting. I like watching the stylistic things. The Spartans are a little bit old school. They still huddle up. You see the Mustangs look to the sideline, do no huddle in their offense. But kind of cool to see the some of the differences there. And there's that re sophomore receiver, number 88, who caught the touchdown, Ryan Fowler. He's in a wing position at the top of your screen, so keep an eye on him. Showing blitz is Riddle at the bottom of your screen. Here he comes, going to set up the screen to Barrett Hudson. He's got some space, cuts back inside, spins inside, and he's eventually going to be tripped up, I believe, by number 39 for the Mustangs, Mitch Ottenreich. Okay, so that'll move the chains for the Spartans. Officials are talking something over. Maybe some kind of extracurriculars happened after the play, or I didn't see any flags. Jason, did you see any flags down I, on the play? I did not see a flag. Uh, they, did they have the down and distance correct? Maybe that's what they're trying to sort out there, making sure they're getting the correct spot. Oh, okay. So that'll be on the Mustangs. That'll be a 15-yard penalty. I didn't see a flag come down, and we didn't really see any altercation, but there was yeah. a personal foul called. They never threw it, but it must have been after the play. But I'll tell you what, it ends up being a big play because you think about it, it was a 15, 17-yard play to start off with. You tack on another 15, and the Spartans are all of a sudden in Mustang territory. I'm looking for number 48 on my roster, and I don't see one from the Royal. I think they, yeah, they had a misidentification there. Motion across the formation. Oh, coming back, little yo-yo motion. 
There is an inside handoff for Barrett. Or it's, not, it's actually Jake Ferris. He's going to power ahead, get a little bit of a yard or two after contact. I'll tell you what, this is a physical ball game. These kids yeah. are getting after it. It's a little chippy out there right now for sure. No doubt about it. That's going to be a gain of about three yards. They're going to bring up a second and seven or a second and a long six. You know, they almost look like they're in a jumbo set the way they get tight in motion like that. And uh, trying to get, be a physical ball game, trying to – Trying to physically wear the Mustangs down, but you know that's kind of the strength going into Klingberg and those guys in the Mustang defense. It's gonna be interesting to see how that plays out. They had great success in that stretch play earlier. I'm a little surprised they haven't gone back to that. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, Juice. The mo of the Spartans is to run the football, and that's why I think that play action was so effective on the first play. It's a jet sweep handoff, trying to gain the edge now. The Spartans fighting inside. That's number three, uh, Donye Lake. Yeah, great tackle with the Mustangs, number t 10. Who's that? Uh, Brett Gulledge. Wow. Gulledge made a great play right there. Young sophomore showing he can flat out play football. He was, he was being blocked and did an excellent job of getting off of that block, taking a step to his right and uh, squaring, that, squaring that ball carrier. All right, going to bring up a third and short. Juice, what do you think the Spartans are going to dial up here? Uh, they're going to run the ball here. There's no question about that. They're going to kind of go jumbo right. Look, looks like they're heavy. Send that fullback in motion back to this backside, I would think, and hand it off. All right, dang, the fullback motioning. They're going to hand it off. A little bit of a delayed handoff. Lots of space there for Jake Ferris, and he's going to be brought down by number 27 for the Mustangs, Anderson Strait. It's yeah, Anderson. Early, but they have a tendency to the right on the running game uh, for the entire first quarter so far. That's probably seven or eight out of seven or eight runs to the right side. Yeah, and they're always sending that guy in motion. They offset and then come back this way with it. I'll tell you what, Strait did another good job of making a tackle, but you don't want to live with your safeties making tackles back there too long. All right, so the Spartans got a pretty nice drive going. I think this started about the 25 or 30 yard line, if I remember correctly. So they're, they're moving across the field here. Two receivers up to the top of your TV screen. Under center is Sean Patel, the sophomore. He's going to hand it off to Barrett Hudson. It, again, there's that right side you talked about, Jason. Yeah, you know, that offset eye is working real well, and you got to give Seven Lakes credit. Their offensive line is kind of winning the battles right here. They've come out of this rain delay and they have been very physical in this drive. Now, Jason, you talked about only two returning starters for the Mustangs this season. Are you, are you seeing that maybe now, uh, a little bit of just adjusting to the varsity speed of play here for these young defenders? I am, and, and I'm seeing they're putting, you know, they're, they're going three on two on the right side. So even with our, even with our better, more physical players, it's tough, tough to get off. Oh, box. fumbled snap there. Patel's able to scoop it up and turns a disaster into a pretty good play for Barrett Hudson. He's fighting I uh, got uh, sandwiched there by both safeties, but he kept his legs going. That's going to be good enough for a first down. Man, Hudson seems like, like why he's so hyped coming in this ball game. He's driving those legs the whole way through. He's a strong kid. got great balance, getting through that hole real quick. The Seven Lakes offense, essentially, you know, they're, they're trying to run a power offense, and most of the time when they've had their success, they've overloaded to one side. Agreed. And that's the scary part is you, you have Hudson running hard, and then as soon as he subs out, a fresh Jake Ferris comes in. Yeah, Ferris is going to do a good job too. Don't be shocked if they pull that ball here and try to throw it here. Patel's already proven he can throw the football. All right, tight end and wing at the bottom of your screen. Only one receiver up top. And they're going to do a little cutback for Ferris. And he's, again, fighting, not brought down on the on first contact. And that's going to be a gain of about four yards. Yeah, it's just it seems like four or five yards almost every play right here on this drive. And uh, Mustangs are going to have to figure this out. One thing I'm impressed with Seven Lakes, uh, Juice and Jason, they do a good job subbing out their personnel. It seems very organized. They're switching out a lot of personnel groupings and keeping their guys fresh. Yeah, they're not missing a beat. Their personnel groups are very organized, and I'll tell you what, that's super important because it's easy to cluster that up. All right, so yeah, you were right, Juice. That's actually a gain of five. So it's going to be a second and five here. Again, tight end at the top. you got Gary Dang, the fullback, in a wing position at the top of your screen. Under center is Patel calling signals. He's going to hand off. There goes Hudson. Whoa, Hudson at the hurdle. And he's going to be brought down inside the 10-yard line to the 9. Yeah, Hudson, I don't have the number on that Mustang defender, but he's yeah. certainly just hurdling. Yeah. Uh, looks like, uh, can't really tell right now, 24. But He, he turned that from a 1-yard gain to a 4-yard gain by going over a cornerback in the air. Yeah, man, these guys came in with all the hype. And I'll tell you what, thus far in the first quarter here, it's hard to believe it's only the first quarter. We're so late this yeah. night here, but they have lived up to it. Yeah. 
Definitely past my bedtime here, but here we go. Uh, gonna go tight end motion. So now both tight ends towards the bottom, but now they're gonna go yo-yo back the other way. Gonna pull the right guard. Little trap play inside. Barrett Hudson fighting Barrett Hudson gets tripped up by the turf monster. He could have walked in for the score. Man, Hudson really had him. I'll tell you one thing about the Spartans offense. When they go in motion, you can kind of follow that guy. That's probably a good sign where that football is going. And Hudson's getting behind that good block and it made a great run out there. He just kind of tripped over his own feet about the one two yard line, it looks like. Jason, when you're backed up against your own goal line here, what are you telling your defense when you're kind of your backs up against the wall? You're, uh, well, I, I really don't know. I don't, I don't enjoy this situation yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. They've, uh, we've not proved that we can stop them. They've only got two yards to go, four yards to go to the end zone. There's a handoff to Jake Ferris, and he is going to get edge. to the edge, and he will score a touchdown. Jake Ferris, the senior running back, Trots in from three yards out, making our score 13-7, seven, seven lakes over Memorial. I tell you, on the drive, you got to give all the credit to the O-line for seven lakes. They Absolutely. went jumbo heavy. They sent guys in motion, and the two-headed monster of the running backs just did a fantastic job. And one thing's for certain, their ability to spell each other really showed on that drive. It did. They, they ran the ball inside. They ran the ball to the edge and were successful doing all of it, including that one little counter back to the left. Uh, this, this needs a solution. Yes, uh, on to attempt the extra point would be Farinez. A little bit of a low snap. Good job by the holder, uh, number 16, uh, Colin Mills, to get that on the on the block, and that's going to be good. So our score, 107, left to go in the first quarter. Seven Lakes 14, Memorial 7 here on Vibe. All right, welcome back. We apologize. Slight technical difficulty there, so we missed the kickoff, but it was brought back out to the 24-yard line. This is a huge drive, big answer opportunity here for the Mustangs. I feel like they haven't been out on offense very much. They haven't. Their uh, weather delay certainly hadn't happened. The interception last time they were there was a big play, so let's see what they can do here. There's the handoff. Gindorf makes the first guy miss, and you know, look at Gindorf lowering his shoulder into the secondary. Big physical run right there, but Gindorf really kind of shifty, too. Tell you what, he lowered his shoulder. That was a nice pickup. You're thinking about they haven't been on offense in a long time and come out and get eight yards your first uh, run there is pretty productive. He ran very physically as a sophomore. Uh, he's gotten bigger. He's been in the weight room, and I fully expect to see a lot of eight to 15-yard gains oh, if he doesn't break one. Procedure penalty, Jason, so that's oh, going to no. back him. That, that's, that's back breaking there after – such a nice run by Gindorf. That's a big call right there. It's going to push him back really about 13 yards with the penalty because I negate the eight-yard run there. Man, I tell you, the way the kids were acting, I was a little concerned, like a, not another weather delay, but uh, mm. <laughs> only a penalty here. Mm -hmm. I watched him last week against North Shore in the scrimmage, and what I was impressed with was the offense looked ready to play. There were not a lot of penalties. There were not no struggles getting the plays in on time. Uh they look great. That's a little bit surprising to see such a silly penalty this early. All right, Salter is calling signals. Looking to throw, airing it out down the sideline. 
and a little too far there, pass intended for number 12, Luke Bohm. He's lobbying a little bit that he was held, and I think that he was nevertheless. Uh, he Clark. would have missed it by five instead of eight yards of yeah, that LeCom overthrow. LeCom was kind of pushed and shoved him a little bit. It, I don't know. It could have went either way, but it was certainly uh, pretty decent coverage. They overthrew him probably by two yards here, and uh, Mustangs are going to face a what, second and 15 here. This isn't your older brother's Memorial Mustang team. I remember back in the day, they're always under center. Now it's like it's mostly spread. It's a cloud of dust. You know, everybody yeah. thought Coach Koch would always want to run the football. It, and it's really, it really relies 100% on the quarterback play. He's had several good quarterbacks the last few years, and they're throwing the ball. Yeah, here they go. They're throwing again, Juice. Looking to throw his Salter's got a man wide open down the sideline. Complete to the 40. The 30. It's a foot race. Nobody's going to catch him. Touchdown, Mustangs. Number 25, the senior, Cooper Gindorf. Man, Gindorf showed what we thought he could do. He actually got that ball on a wheel route in the flats. And, man, you got to give the quarterback credit. He put that ball right on the money. That was, what, an 85-yard pass right there? So at least 75. I think it was at the 15 or 25-yard line. Just a fantastic play. No one can complain about this game in the first quarter. Nothing but big plays. One grinded out drive by seven legs. But it's been a big play after big play. Man, and it's crazy, the juice you mentioned. I can't believe it's still the first quarter. It is. <laughs> Conditioning is definitely going to play a factor in this game. Looks like uh, Lewis is coming out to kick this extra point. I tell you what, in a game like this, all these points are huge. Absolutely. Jackson Salter is the quarterback. Set to try to place the ball down on the, on the block. Snaps a little bit low. Good job by Salter to handle it. The kick is away. Looks good. And it is good. Your, yeah, your score. 16 seconds left to go in the first quarter. We're not at a 14 here on Vibe. All right, Matt Lewis set to kick it away after the long touchdown pass to Cooper Gindorf, tying the game at 14. This is a lower kick, and Ferris and Fowler are going to let that go into the end zone, so it'll be a touchback for the Spartans. Yeah, the Spartans will start off here at the 25-yard line. It's going to be interesting. Their last drive was just a ground and pound. They kind of went in these heavy sets, sending the fullback in motion. Their two-headed monster combination running back did a great job. It's going to be interesting to see uh, if Memorial can make some adjustments here on defense. I'm curious as to the patience of the offensive coordinator. Uh, personally, I would continue exactly what I'm doing right now. But I also would remember that first play of the game where he pulled it and threw it deep. I'm interested. Yeah, one cool thing about Seven Lakes, their, their offensive coordinator actually had to leave teaching and coaching for a, a personal reason. And then the, the next guy in line got the head job at Dulles, huh. Bill Gary. So it's actually Jimmy Hammond, the head coach, is calling the plays tonight for the Seven Lakes Spartans. So that is something to watch for. Will Coach Hammond remain patient? Uh, All right, there is your motion. They're going to hand it off inside. Good patience there uh, by uh, Barrett uh, Hudson, but he stood up by number 35. Uh, the senior inside linebacker and the captain, number 35, Cade West. Yeah, Cade West made several big plays there, but that was a group effort by Memorial. It's interesting, you, you can tell somehow, some way, that it looked like they tried to make some adjustments uh, on that run game. Cade West has big shoes to fill. Grayson Lunscombe last year was an animal at middle linebacker. Yes, he, he was. just mean. He's a type of guy that would steal something from you and then help you look for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are at the end of the first quarter. That first quarter was brought to you by the parents of the MHS football team. We want to thank the Memorial 
Booster Club, uh, and Mr. Stubbs for putting this all together and, and providing this for us. And we also want to thank Brandon Bohm with Texas Tea Tavern, 1535 Britmore Road. Again, after the game tonight, it's going to be really late, so the tavern might be closed, but in a normal situation, that's our after-game hangout. So we will step away for a quick break, 30-second break, and we'll be right back for the second quarter here on Vibe. All right, we are back. The Spartans having facing a second down and nine from just outside their own 25-yard line. They, they've been under center predominantly. I don't know if they've taken a shotgun snap tonight. Patel? I, yeah. I really don't remember either. Yeah, there's your fumble on the jet sweep handoff. Donye Lake going to jump on it. A loss of about five on the play. You know, that's a real tough play, Jason. When you come back and you're under center and you're trying to run that jet, sp jet sweep, everything kind of has to go perfectly for the quarterback. And he just tried to hand it off to him a little too quickly there. It looks like he put the ball on his hip. He did put the ball on his hip. They're being a little cavalier with the football. That is the third time they put it on the ground so far. Once it went out of bounds, twice they recovered it themselves. I think we should keep an eye on that. Big play for the Mustang defense here. It's going to be third and 14-15. See if they can get off the field. Third and long. One of the few times we just we just talked about that. One of the few times we've seen him in the shotgun here now in a third and long situation. Mustang showing blitz. Here comes Riddle. Picked up by the guard. Going to throw a deep out route. Ah, nice throw by Patel. He's going to throw it on a rope complete to number six, the senior captain, Davis Yates. you got to give a, the Spartans line all the credit right there. Patel made a great throw, but the reality of the situation, Memorial came with the blitz, and they just didn't get there, and Patel put it right on the money. And Seven Lakes has a choice that they're going to punt. They're inside their own 35-yard uh, line. So, you know, even though it's a short yardage to gain, Coach Hammond going to trust in his defense. Got to be careful because Memorial has dominated the special teams. Juice, what would Lane Kiffin do here, fourth and two <laughs> on his own 33? Lane Kiffin would definitely He's go for going it. for this one. No question. I think Memorial should just be aware of a fake, but not going to happen. A little bit of a low snap, but good job there uh, by uh, uh, Colin Mills. Making the first guy miss is number nine, Carson Wall, and he's eventually going to be brought down. Nice open field tackle there by number 45, it looks like, for the Spartans, Patricio Diaz. Coach, you mentioned uh, uh, Siblet during the break while we were talking. Yeah. Uh, keep, it, keep an eye on number nine. He's got the same – He's got the same mentality. He's extremely – he's not a real big guy. He's Carson's probably 5'9 and just, just wired with nothing but muscle. And uh, he, But he plays tough like that. He's fearless, which is why he's returning punts. Absolutely. And that's been a big difference in this ball game. Looks like the Mustangs have somebody different in at tailback. Hmm. Yeah, it's got an 8 at the end. I can't see the first number. That's 38. There's the inside handoff. A lot of penetration oh, there in the backfield. Corbin Comiskey. Yep, Corbin Comiskey, the junior running back, takes the handoff. He's going to gain about one yard. Comiskey did a good job there. It's, I think that's his first carry of the ball game. I guess we had to spell again off after that big pass play. It looks like he might be trying to come back in here. Did we forget the oxygen machine today? Well, <laughs> no kidding. This is the first break in the weather in probably about eight weeks. These kids, uh, I know it's late, but they're probably pretty excited to play in this better uh, temperature. All right, going to be a second down and nine for the Mustang. They're going to go empty. Five wide receivers hmm. here. So Lane Kiffin maybe got into Coach Koch's ear. <laughs> Spread it out. Yeah. I like Van Wee out wide here to my side, number 14. And it's going to be a quick hitch route complete to number 20 for the Mustangs, Co. Trednick. Yeah, you know, you, you talk about the Mustangs offense as it has evolved through the years. You would never hardly ever see these guys go empty. And, sure. And yeah. they certainly haven't been under center at all. So it's uh, it's good to see. But this is a big play right here. It's third and four, third and five. We're in a back to, you know, back and forth football game. 9.50 left here in the first half, and it's 14 to 14. Yeah. And just 15 seconds left here on the play clock. Mustangs, even though they're, they're spread, no huddle, they, they don't really, they're not hurrying. They're still eating up play clock like they traditionally do. 
And there is a fake and the throw, the hitch complete. I think that's Van Wee that you're just talking about there, Jason. It is Van Wee. He's a very big guy. I think Will's probably six foot three, maybe 190 pounds. Excellent baseball player. I believe that he's gotten multiple offers from schools that you would have heard of. Yeah, Van Wee's just a great athlete. Another good, uh, good throw by Slaughter there is Salter's there. It was a fantastic play. Mustangs convert a big first down. Mm -hmm. You can see Salters there calling his protection and the blocking scheme to the offensive line in this no-huddle system. Yeah, you kind of a poor man's hurry up, right? They'll run the whole play clock. Yep, agreed. Going to shift uh, number 29, uh, Jackson Graham, into a wing position. There's the handoff, again, fighting inside. Nice little run inside there for Comiskey. It's interesting. You know, Seven Lakes was so physical on that drive a couple drives ago. Now it looks like Memorial starting to establish the line of scrimmage on the O-line. Running behind Big Max Wang. Yeah, agreed. Going to bring up a second down and four. Kind of starting to see that right side cave in a little bit for Seven Lakes. It's going to be interesting to see how they can continue this physical approach. And just by the eye test, it feel like Memorial, definitely on the right side, has a big size advantage over the Seven Lakes front seven. Absolutely. I mean, Max is not only is he 315, uh, he's pound for pound one of the strongest guys on the field. All right, wing back uh, there, number 37, William Fowler. Looking to pass, going to hit Fowler in the middle of the field. Nice open field tackle there by number 20 for the Spartans. That's the junior linebacker, Amani Hooks. That's the pass I'm talking about. Did you see how cool Jackson was there with his feet? He's, he's, he's keeping his feet moving, but he's never leaving his hula hoop there. And he just is very comfortable back there. He's never he's never looking to break free unless he absolutely must. Well, that's that baseball player in him. You know, he's, exactly. he's very much under control at all times, which makes him a fantastic quarterback. He has the mental makeup for it yeah, for sure. Yeah, that looked like a third baseman. He knew he had plenty of time to get it to first. And we've been very complimentary of the Seven Lakes O-line in pass protection, but the Memorial O-line has been equally good. I mean, Salters has stayed clean tonight, had time to step up and throw. Here we go, first and ten. Two wide receivers up top. 3-4 defense out of the Spartans. Short motion. Going to hand it off. It's a lot of penetration. That was big mm. number 98. Did a good job defeating the block there inside. That's Derek Ferguson, the junior nose guard. Yeah, Ferguson, great, great, great penetration. We were talking about how Memorial's line was kind of dominating on that side, but Ferguson put a big stop to it. It's going to create a second and 13 situation. Now, Mustang offense turns in a little bit differently when you know when you're in obvious passing situations. It kind of takes away some of those motions and misdirection stuff that they like to do. It's, it's going to be interesting to see what they do right here because it's an obvious passing situation. And it's probably four down territory as well. I would think so too, Jason. I think you're right about that. Now I wonder, we haven't seen Gindorf at all on this drive. Just hoping that he's, he's okay. But there's a short motion. Pressure coming. Salters escapes out to his left. And he's going to be brought down again. That is the uh, junior linebacker, number 20, Amani Hooks. Man, Hooks just did a great job. That was such an athletic play because he's going against a quarterback as a great athlete. And he, he got him down on the ground. It looked for a second that, man, he was almost going to cause a fumble. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, you could tell Hooks is actually trying to swipe that ball out of there. That's one time Salters probably should have just took up took off upfield and got what he could get because trying to throw in that back, especially being right-handed like that, it's a risky situation. All right, Jason, third and long situation. We've talked about this isn't maybe where Memorial is the most. No, no team is comfortable in this situation, but what do you think that, that coach going to dial up here on a third and long, Jason? Uh, this is the worst play to have to call, but I, I assume they're going to go play action. Mm. And I don't love the play action when you know you're going to throw, but right. let's, <laughs> let's see. What else you got? Motion across for Fowler. Just and there's a timeout taken by the Mustangs. That play clock was getting close to zero there, so Coach Koch takes timeout. I was wrong. That was not going to be play action. It was just a simple drop back. And we'll go ahead and take a quick timeout with them and be right back here on Pipe.
Okay, welcome back. Big third down here for the Mustangs. An emotion Fowler across the formation. Stepping up is Salters, intended for Fowler. And that will be incomplete, no flag, and that will bring up a fourth down. So again, you're at your own 40. So uh, uh, Jason, you mentioned this is four down territory due to the field position, but it looks like uh, Memorial is going to bring out the punt team and try to pin Seven Lakes uh, deep in, inside the 10. It looked to me that Fowler had the seam there. Maybe a better throw could have probably led to a first down. Give Seven Lakes credit. John Paul Johnson, number 27, did a good job he, in coverage. He was right very there. well covered. And Gindorf is out there at, at, uh, as the punter. So Gindorf is our punter. And so we were kind of worried if perhaps he had been banged up somewhere along the way. But it looks like he's going to be okay. And he's set to take the snap and punt it away. Nobody deep for the, for the Spartans. They're watching fake all the way. So they're going to go ahead and sacrifice this. Mm. Yeah, not – Okay. Didn't get the best punt Stitch. there. But it gets a nice roll, really nice roll there for the Mustangs. And it's going to – Great job there by Gindorf, going to tie inside the nine-yard line. Hey, there's more than one way to do it, right? And the knuckleball uh, gets about a 15, 17-yard bounce, and uh, Seven Lakes is going to be pinned down here on the nine-yard line and to see if they can put another big drive together. And that's where it kind of came back to bite Seven Lakes a little bit. They were so worried about the fake, they had no one back there to try to you know, negate some of that, that role that, that the uh, Mustangs got. But here okay. we go. Coach, when you think about it, though, these this particular game is kind of going like the last six games, right? I mean, yes. it's just a slugfest. If you don't, uh, you're not aware of it, the last five games here have been decided by five points or less yes. be between these two clubs. So very, very evenly matched. I think that uh, Coach Koch and Coach Hammond are going to keep teeing this up every single year. It's just such a great matchup. All right, under center is Patel. He's going to hand it off inside. A little iso play, a lot of space there. Barrett Hudson. I think he was down. They're going to say that he was down when that ball came out, uh, fumble caused by the ground. He certainly was down. But, boy, I tell you what, you give Hudson a seam. He is so quick through there. We were making a lot, far too many tackles on the second and third level here. Yeah, no, and after watching last year, you, you mentioned Grayson Linscombe there, the linchpin in the middle of the defense. You, you didn't see a lot of these plays gashing for eight, nine-yard gains on first down. It's, it's a young defense. It's probably going to take some time. It's a young group. But Lins Linscombe was that special. He was just a big physical kid. He's not a kid that you usually see at Memorial that, with that type of size. Yeah. A throwback linebacker had the neck roll. And I was going to say I missed the neck roll. Yep. They are going to pull the right guard around. A lot of penetration there coming from the bottom of your screen. Can't see the number. That's number 81 was able to slide down in there and make a nice tackle. That's Kostin Teramiji. Their center is doing an incredibly good job of snapping the ball and making his block. Yeah, he Agreed. Did. Agreed. Yeah, the middle the middle's been very strong all night for seven legs. And it's kind of unusual seeing a team that goes under center so predominantly. You don't see that so much anymore in 2023. No, you don't see a team go under center. You certainly don't see a team huddle like that. It's usually yeah. a hand signal yeah. since like second grade. So it's interesting yeah. they do it. But look, it's efficient. They get that get the ball out pretty quick. All right, under center again is Patel. He's going to uh, motion across his tight end, a little yo-yo motion. Going to return. There's the bootleg. He's going to try to do oh, Almost intercepted by Matthew Lewis. He read that tight end crossing across the field all the way and maybe even would have had a pick six opportunity, but that would have been a tough catch. I think, I don't know. I think he owes us 10 push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> he does owe us 10 push-ups. Did you coach right? Matthew Lewis in, in, uh, in youth ball coach? Or? If I would have, he'd be doing 10 push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> I think Lewis would probably agree with you on that. But give him credit, man. He read that play perfectly, and it just kind of hit him in the chest. And I think he may have had a looked up and was trying to see himself score a touchdown real quick. Yeah, great intelligent play there by Lewis. Whenever you have any kind of bootleg, like that there's only certain route combination you can do and he knew somebody was going to come crossing across the field and he found him all right under center again is patel there's your short motion fake to donye lake oh nice there's a little a little bit of late developing play jake ferris still up klingberg has to make the tackle 12 yards down the field man ferris just keeps running so hard every play i mean he really runs to the whistle on every down and you got to get him to the ground his legs keep moving he's quick as a cat and uh he made a big first down there yeah, gentlemen, it felt like it took us two hours to play the first quarter, but this second quarter feels like it's flying by. We're just under the four-minute mark now. Well, you've had some big long drives and a lot of running the football for some success. Mm -hmm. All right, Seven Lakes, very methodical tonight. They're just kind of slowly <laughs> matriculating the ball down the field, twin set to the bottom of your screen. Patel calling signals under center. Going to motion his fullback, dang. Going to be an inside iso play. Good patience there from Ferris tell you what i mean this game is kind of back and forth as soon as you think seven lakes is no longer the physical team and now they're coming back and re reinstate their will a little bit here what do we do do we need to add bodies to the front well just got to play a little bit better up front and take a little couple chances but you know the run game just sets everything up for those guys and they're essentially going in like a jumbo set and the following the guy in motion generally is where the ball is going 
uh, last year and so far what I've seen this year, we've only ever, you know, given them surprise blitz off the edge. Uh, I don't know that we have an up the middle package here. I mean, if you look at them, out. they're offset to the right over there, heavily loaded, and they're going to send somebody in motion right there. Right. Here's a, a, another play action. Find the wheel route. It's open, complete. What, running down the sideline, number 84, that is Carter Hatton, the junior tight end. Lewis there to make the tackle. I'll tell you, they sent him in motion, and they, he to, they totally lost him on that wheel right, right there. And Memorial is very fortunate to get that guy down. It looked like Steve Spurrier, 96. Where did that guy come from? Did you step off the sideline or something? It was He's amazing. 20 yard, no, no one within 15 yards of him. I'll tell you what, Patel, again, when given the opportunity, he's made another big throw. One thing I noticed is that the sophomore linebacker was in there. Richardson is in there at inside linebacker. That's the guy that ran back the kickoff there at the beginning of the game. So he's getting some defensive reps now. All right, three receivers down to the bottom of your screen. Inside handoff, little jump stop maneuver there to make the first guy miss for Jake Ferris. Matter of fact, that was Richardson who missed there. He was on an inside stunt there and just kind of missed him. And I... Memorial Mustang defense is trying to gamble a little bit here to try to get some penetration. Impressive feat, though, there from Richardson. As an inside linebacker, you don't really think it's the kind of guy that's going to run back kickoff. So showing a lot of versatility and speed there. But you're starting to see a lot of hands on the hips from the Memorial defense because they've been out there a lot. They have been some long drives for the Spartans. There is. And you've got to realize they've been practicing in the morning. <laughs> so it's interesting to see out, out here. We've got a little cooler weather tonight, but it's not like it's really cool. Patel also going to bleed down the play clock. It's down to eight seconds before he sends his motion man. Going to hand it off inside. That's Ferris again. And Richardson along with a bevy of other defenders combined to make the tackle. I think number 27 also stuck his nose in there. Uh, that's Anderson Strait. Yeah, Strait's had to step up and make a bunch of tackles so far in this ball game. Like I said earlier, when your safety's making tackles, it's kind of – Tough deal. Yeah, with only 90 seconds left to go here in the first half, you can tell Seven Lakes is trying to bleed this clock out and not allow the Mustangs to have another possession before half. This is a crucial one. They've already proven they can kick pretty good on these extra points. So we'll see what happens here. Seven Lakes is trying to punch this ball in the end zone. They have a first and goal, but it's a very long first and goal. They're going to have to go the full 10 yards to try to punch this one in. So that's an advantage for the Mustangs. Two receivers up top. They're going to have movement early. Free play. Patel. Man, great awareness from the sophomore understanding that he had a free play on the offside penalty and going deep into the end zone man patel made a great wise decision right there by putting that ball up uh anytime you have in a first and goal situation and you give up five yards man that's a lot tough. down there very i don't see a flag I oh so i guess that was okay i guess they got back in time and that uh, was just a play from scrimmage yeah you're right jason that's going to be second down Good heads up, Jason. I, I thought that was offsides. But I didn't hey. see how it wasn't offside. <laughs> <laughs> As they say, we'll take it. But, you know, like you've been talking about, Jason, that, you know, the moxie of Patel, the sophomore, I mean, he's done a good job just feeling like he's in control, bleeding down the play clock, knowing when he needs to start his cadence. Just been really impressive. Here comes the motion. They're going to run that stretch play here, I bet. Nope. You know, it's a play yeah. action. Bootleg. Patel's hit! Trying to find Davis crossing. And that was Richardson who applied the pressure, but he's trying to find the uh, senior receiver, Davis Yates. Man, Otto laid that guy out. Otto laid that guy out. Patel out because I tell you what, without the pressure that that he was dragging across the back of the end zone and he was going to be free able to release that ball, Patel's a little banged up here. He, he doesn't but, look like he liked that very much at all. He felt that one for sure. Interesting, uh, you hmm. know, change of linebacker for Memorial might be paying off. Now, did you, are you, you said uh, Richardson goes by Otto? Otto. 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 O -T -T -O. Oh, o -T -T -O. really? I didn't put that in my notes for this guy. It's a family name. The Richardsons have all kinds of crazy family name stories. All right, so timeout will be taken. Uh, I think it was Seven Lakes, I believe, that took it. So they're going to talk it over. We'll take the break with them and be right back here on Fipe.
All right, we are back. 54 seconds left to go. Patel under center. It's a third and goal from the 10-yard line for the Spartans. Twins to the bottom. Looks like Memorial showing blitz. Rush flushed out to his left, spinning away. Patel looking in the back of the end zone. Touchdown to number 85 for the Spartans, the sophomore tight end, Peter Noonan. I tell you what, the Mustangs just kind of lost Noonan for a second, and Patel doing what he does. He that stayed, was Patel. St stayed patient the whole time. He rolled out, booted. He just improvised there because it, that wasn't the set play there, and he made a great job, a great adjustment. He's been consistent all evening throwing the football. His offensive line did a fantastic job there. He did have to scramble a little bit to get out of the pocket, but there was still no one near him when he when he finally decided to bail. Yeah, it looks like I think the Mustangs sent Ottenreath on the blitz, and it was starting to put a little bit of pressure in Patel's face, but he's able to escape. Here comes Farinez for the extra point. Kick is away. And it is good. So our score of 46 seconds left to go. I guess we'll just stay here because we're getting near the end of the half. 46 le seconds left to go. Seven Lakes 21, Memorial 14. Let's talk strategy here for Coach Koch. You have 46 seconds. You have two timeouts left. Do you think Mustangs go pedal to the metal and try to score, or do you think they play conservative and just go to the half? Well, they only got two timeouts. It's really kind of going to depend on this kickoff return. If they get good field position, they might take a couple chances. But if they get pinned down here on the 15 to 25-yard line, I'd be fairly surprised that they got really risky. And, Jason, do you think that the, that the Spartans try maybe a squib kick to try to negate a long return? Memorial's uh, ready to run one back. I certainly wouldn't kick it to Otto. I know that. Yeah. Uh, will they? And, I mean, look. Wall is uh, also very dangerous. He's been – he was one step away. I mean, the kid had a lot of his leg, but if it weren't for that, I think he'd have broken a punt a little earlier. Now, the kickoff team's been a little shaky. They've already allowed one touchdown and a couple big runbacks here. I would not be surprised to see them squib it here. Was that first kick of the game an attempted squib or just kind of a uh, – No, it was not a, a very little sky kick. kick and, uh, it was hurt by the fact that there was the penalty. That, that that's not right. The penalty back, off yeah. the touchdown. It was a huge play. All right, so Farina is teeing it up from his own 40, the junior place kicker for the Spartans, and he also, of course, handles the kickoffs. 46 seconds remain in the first half of play. Farina is approaching the ball. They're going to kick it deep, and it's actually going to – oh, it's going to go out of bounds. So. Well, that was a painful kick there because that's going to put it out at the 35 or 40 right there. That's exactly right. So what do you need here to decide whether or not you're going to keep you're going to keep trying to score? Well, you need one big play on first down, right, and get it started here. And hopefully they don't run too much clock off here and, and try to get something established. They, they got a good quarterback, but he has already thrown an interception early in this ballgame. So that's got to be in Coach Koch's mind just a little bit. Jason, you think the seven legs are just play, kind of play like a prevent style of defense and, and play over the top, or do you think they're going to continue to – I think they will, and if I were them, I would probably shade the Van Wee side of the field. He's a very large target. He's 6'3 with long arms. He's very fast. I would imagine they're going to shade somebody over there to help out. And here comes Van Wee towards the bottom of your screen, That's number 14. Right. He's going to be the bottom receiver in the screen, so I want to keep an eye on mm -hmm. him. Spread, set, balance. Two receivers up top, two to the bottom. They're throwing for sure. Gindorf is in front of the quarterback. Looks like he set the block. Yep, here we go. Protection is going to hit it to Fowler. Going to make the first guy miss, and he's going to be driven out of bounds by number 31 for the Spartans, Carter LeCompte. Only four yards there, but, you know, at least they didn't burn the clock, and they stayed in bounds, and he did a good job of getting out there. It's going to be a second and seven situation, but the clock is the enemy here more than the down and distance. Yeah, second second down. The clock uh, did stop. They ruled that uh, uh, Fowler was out of bounds there. Their safety is playing 14 yards off the ball. Yeah, Trips right there are playing a little prevent defense here. Interestingly, they see, try to get one down the seam right here. Look at look at it in the slot right there. Salters looking, stepping up. Fowler wide open across the middle. Nice open field tackle. Uh, that's by Easterling, the inside linebacker and senior captain Austin Easterling. Yeah, that was the play they were looking for. They were hoping to break that. They got to get to the line of scrimmage fairly really quick. They're going to reset these downs. Uh, the clock is running on them though. Yeah, you might want to think about using a timeout here. Yeah, this is it's not, going. It, I think should, they should probably call a timeout. They should have done that. Yeah, they got to get it off now. They've already yeah. wasted too much time. Yeah. It's down to 20. Stepping up is Salters. He's going to tuck it and run. Going to step on the first man. Ball's loose! Ball's loose. I think Easterling got it. Ball got poked away, and I think <clears throat> the senior captain, Austin Easterling, was able to – yeah, Easterling comes away with it. Here, 
Man, Easterlin's made some plays in this ball game. He's been terrific for the Spartans. Salter's, you know, a little hesitant there. He's trying to throw a little bit too much. Again, maybe t one time where he should have just tucked it and went for it and took what he got, but it was late in the half. 11 seconds left here in the half. Seven lakes. Got another opportunity. Interesting to see what they're going to do. Patel's throwing the ball so well. I don't know why you don't take at least one shot. I think every coach at the high school and above level should have to master Madden, a Madden football <laughs> game because – if you want to really be good at that game, you've got to know how to manage the clock. Yeah, they got that play behind. You know, they were kind of playing behind the eight ball the whole time. They didn't get to play in on time, and they uh, paid a little price for it. Is this a victory formation? No. I, it looks like seven lakes is going in. I don't think they're going to go deep. No one, Coach Hamney, no, oh, he's, he's proved me wrong here. He's going to take a shot in the wheel route. Almost intercepted by number 24 for the Mustangs, Monty Self. That's 10 push-ups. Well, Monty Self is going to regret not getting that one. <laughs> he might have had some space on that sideline, too. The one thing we know for sure, the coach is going to uh, run the clock out right here. Yes. Sure. <laughs> like I said, I've known Coach Hammond for a long time. He's typically conservative, so I was kind of surprised he dialed up the wheel route there. But, yeah, you're right. They're definitely – they may even just kneel it here. I'm going to tell you something, but he has some confidence in this young yeah. quarterback. That's <laughs> Victor, for here's sure. victory formation. That's for sure. I mean, let's not do that twice, right? Sure. Juice, how about you do push-ups for every point that's scored in the second half? Oh, push-ups are good. Push-ups are good. All right, there is the kneel down. So that'll do it for the first half. And we, we're not exactly sure. We've been speculating that perhaps they'll do an abbreviated halftime just because of the fact that it's already 1030 at night and we're just at halftime. So we'll... Looks like Seven Lakes' band is out there. Yeah, the band. I think that they may just do the Seven Lakes portion since Memorial has gone home for the evening. That may be what they do. So we'll actually leave the cameras running and uh, leave the sound on if you want to enjoy the sounds of, of high school uh, the high school bands here for the Seven Lakes Spartans. And one thing I did want to recognize, guys, we'll, we'll kind of do our final thoughts and we'll sign off for the half. I do want to recognize number 72, Donald Mafridge, the senior right guard. After that fumble, he immediately went up to Salters, put his arm around him, and just, hey, we're going to be okay. Long way to go. Like, I, I really uh, admire that leadership there from the senior guard. That's fantastic. You know, this ball game, Memorial gets the ball back to start the second half. So, you know, Salters is their go-to guy. He played a lot of football for him last year. And if they're going to have success, they're really going to need to lean on him. Any final thoughts, Jason, before we sign off for the half? I think Salters is going to be fine. He did have two turnovers in the first half. He doesn't give me the impression uh, to be the type of guy who that's really going to bother very much. Yeah. He's, he's the guy. All right. We will step away, enjoy the Seven Lakes High School Band, and we'll be back uh, for the, an exciting second half here on Fight.
Legacy Stadium in Katy. And 30 seconds remain on the clock. Seven Lakes has returned to the field, gentlemen, but there are no Memorial Mustangs. I think Coach Koch might be giving them a little bit of a spirited talk in the locker room in there. He may have lost track of time. Yeah, he did lost the track of town. You know, usually these timeouts were at 20, I mean, these half times are Correct. 28 minutes. So might have caught the Mustangs a little off guard, but I think your first intuition is right. They're getting a little, <laughs> little chewing uh, for sure. But, you know, the reason why, it's it's been a very physical ball game. And one thing's for certain about this ball game, there's been some big plays, but it's really who's what um, interior line is going to dominate here in the second half is going to make the difference in this ball game. I think it's kind of a smart move for Coach Koch to really, you know, push the officials to the edge as far as the time here at halftime because we noticed Seven Lakes is doing a lot of substitutions on offense. You yeah, know, I don't, I don't that's know a good I point. quite as much of Memorial. I, I just worry about the depth and the fatigue here in the second half. No, it's going to be interesting because this is the first ball game and it's been so hot all year yeah. long, but the Seven Lakes Spartans are lining up for a kickoff and the Mustangs aren't even out the locker room yet. No, and this guy, this official standing in the end zone looks like he's ready to blow his whistle. No, and interesting. Could, yeah. Here, here come the Mustangs. Here come the first couple. And again, because of the bands aren't here and we've had the long delays, there's not the usual run through the band or anything. But they're just going to kind of have to come out and play. Yeah, you know, it's going to be interesting. Hopefully uh, they don't get a delay of the game penalty here, but I, I don't know how they could do that with the way this game's going. So you got to uh, give a little grace. Yeah, yeah I mean, we've had, what, two rain delays. Uh, I was just talking to one of the officials over here. There were, you know, the, the, the mile radius is 10 miles, and the oh, last lightning strike was like, 10 miles so we were very fortunate to keep playing there earlier in the ball game that after that second delay so uh the mustangs are going to return this kick correct and uh yep. yeah that's right it's gonna be interesting to see what they can do and bounce back here got to get some confidence on their quarterback and he's been playing well he just made a couple mistakes here and there but it's all effort for him he, anytime he's even made a mistake it's he's he's running wide open and the fearless returner the junior number nine carson wall heading back deep to return it and before we get going, Jason, you mentioned you wanted to recognize the group that's uh, created. Oh, the Sweethearts. Yeah. yeah, my daughter was a sweetheart before she graduated. <laughs> they they, uh, they make all the signs, and uh, the poetry is getting a little better this year. I'm, <laughs> I'm proud of it. They've, they've found some inspiration. Hey, the Sweethearts get a little shout out there. All right, Farina is the junior kicker for the Spartans, set to kick it away. And we are underway here in the second half. End over end kick. We're almost kind of fighting for it a little bit there. Wall's going to bobble it. Going to try to find a crease, but he's going to be tackled by Austin Easterling, the senior captain inside linebacker. Easterling just did a good job of getting downfield. They bobbled that kickoff exactly what you don't want to do to start the second half, but that's going to put the ball what, at the 19-yard line for the Mustangs. Tough opening field position here for Memorial. What do you think they do here? What do you, what do you think was, was the game plan at halftime, Jason? You know, what do you think they discussed? I, I think the offense looks fine. Uh, they haven't had the ball very much. They put up two scores, an extended drive, two turnovers, hold on to the ball is all, all they really have to do, and then somehow solve the right side of the right side of the seven legs offensive line. Yeah, that's exactly right. See, uh, if the Mustangs try to establish the run here, I would imagine they're just trying to get first downs here to start this half and get some confidence. Is that back. Gendorf back in the game? It is. Gendorf there flanking Salters. He's going to get the opening handoff, and he's going to be met near the line of scrimmage. He fights forward to gain an extra yard. Uh, so about a gain of about uh, two yards there on first down. It's getting chippy. They're stepping over each other. I'll tell you what, these these guys, they you know, they play each other every year, so they're very familiar with each other. And I'll tell you what, it's just a good ball game. It's been physical. I'm not going to call his number, but there's a player on uh, the Seven Lakes team who uh, is chippy now and was chippy earlier. So he's he's been offended by something this evening. That's <laughs> Just playing hard, but you know, these guys, it's the first ball game of the year. They've been practicing all summer, so uh, it's been hot out there, and they deserve to, to play physical for sure. It's, it's fun to hit somebody else, right? It in certainly a real game. Is. Yeah. So. All right, here come the Mustangs. Looking back at the quarterback is the old line to get their, uh, their uh, blocking scheme here. Probably going to be a run play on second down. No, they're going to drop back and pass. Put it back good in his protection. Going to sling it into the sideline to Gindorf. Man, good throw there by Salters. Put it on a rope. Yeah, getting our, get, get a j good job right there of uh, catching that football for sure. I suspect he's going to get it again here. Man, Gindorf has a pretty good arm on him. He just winged it back to the official. <laughs> he, you know, he, he can do a little halfback pass action at some point in this He season. looks like he was going, you know, thinking about Van Wee at first there. Van Wee was open, and he just dropped it off to Gindorf. Yeah, Seven Lakes deep. I totally agree with you there, Juice. Seven Lakes defense doing a good job uh, you know, covering everything deep, so he just checked it down to Gindorf, which is – that's Always a, a good choice. That's you know, a good spot. We end up with the first down there. I'll tell you what, Van Wee looks like Civic out there physically for sure. 
All right, two backs in the backfield here joining Salters. He's going to give the snap to Gindorf, trying to get around the left side. Going to be tackled from behind, I think, again, by Easterling is going to run that one down. Yeah, Easterling, another tackle there. One thing uh, he could have done there, tried to bounce that uh, outside, but he went, went cut back inside, and that's where all the Spartan defenders were. Second down, eight yards to go. They made a big play in the same situation just a minute ago in this deal. They're going to need another one. Salters again talking to his offensive lineman, giving them the scheme. I would mind, not mind seeing Salters run this football. Again, two backs in the back, a little bit of a tight end in a wing position. There's the fake. Going to run the bootleg. Coming down to the bottom of your screen is Salters looking. He's going to just tuck that one and run and there get out of bounds. That was a great play on Salters' behalf right there. You know, just knowing the situation, you were in a second and long situation. It's crucial to get four or five yards there and put yourself in a manageable situation with about a third, fourth, third, five right here uh, inside uh, Spartans' territory. Yeah, huge, huge play here. They're going to back the stick up one yard, so it'll be third and five. I mean, a true third and five at this point. Memorial's got to get that play in. They're always pushing that play clock down to the bare minimum, it seems. Last year, they struggled with uh, play calling signals, and it actually was a clock problem. This team looks to be a little more organized at this point of the season. It's impressive, too, in week one. So early on here, looking pretty sharp offensively. They've hit Fowler a lot in these kinds of situations. He is going to go out for a pass. They're looking uh, for the mm. slant behind Fowler. That was intended for number 20 for the Mustangs, Co. Trednick. Yeah, LeCompte, another good coverage for him for the Spartans. He, he did a good job there. That ball was thrown backwards a little bit, like right behind him a little bit. But I tell you, it was good coverage by LeCompte, and the Mustangs are going to have to punt here. The Spartans got exactly what they wanted. They wanted to come out here in the second half and shut down this drive, and they did exactly that. Yeah, really nice start here for the Spartans defense. Jason said it, both, both offenses have looked pretty good tonight. They've been able to move down the field, so this is a big stand for a defense here, getting not quite a three now. They did get one first down there. Uh, yeah, the offense has just kind of been sporadic, right? But that's uh, how could you not expect that in the first football game of the year? Spartans call timeout there. That's interesting. On yeah. a punt. Another interesting thing, yeah, and they have an inside linebacker back deep to return it. Austin Easterling has been doing everything. <laughs> Might as well return kicks and Another inside linebacker, Otto Richardson, ran back a kickoff. So these linebackers are very versatile these days. Yeah, I don't know Eastling well, but I know Otto is a special kid. And he can, you know, if they put him at tailback, don't be surprised if he's one of the better tailbacks in the district as well. Yeah, earlier you asked me, what would you do in this situation? Uh, give it to Otto was always my answer when I was coaching him when he was little. <laughs> Absolutely. And this timeout is brought to you by the families of MHS football. Thank you for all of your commitment to the program and also Brandon Bohm with Texas Tea Tavern. I don't know if we ever got – did we get a verdict on what, when closing time is? I couldn't Jason, find closing. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we have time after the game to head out to 1535 Britmore Road and support uh, uh, Mr. Bohm and his Texas Tea Tavern. The roomy sports-centric hangout with cold drinks and a patio, live music, pool tables, and grub. The perfect post-game hangout. Great burgers at the Texas Tea Tavern as well. I can assure you, they are Ooh. still rolling right now. Open now. I'm, I'm on the Google and closes at 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Well, there we go. We got plenty there of time. Go. <laughs> Louisiana style there. All right. There's the snap. Gindorf going to send it away. Okay. That's a great punt. Good punt. Bounce. Did not bounce. It's kind of the opposite of his last kick. That one looked good through the air, but didn't get the bounce that he got before. Well, I'll tell you what, these guys are still chippy, talking to each other the whole time. They both need to get their back to their respective sidelines and play football. All right, so this is the biggest test for the Memorial Mustang defense tonight. I mean, they've they've been kind of, you know, they've not they're not giving up quick scores, but they, you know, they've been hanging in there, but there's been some long drives with the Spartans. What do they need to do here to get a definitive stop defensively? Well, they're going to have to stop Patel, right? He's hurt him all night, especially when he scrambles around there and hits the open receiver. The run game for the, the, for the Spartans, when they get it going, it's interesting. You know, they did so much what I call jumbo, but it looks like they're trying to Is spread them out. Is surprising to you, Juice, that they're going to spread it's it out here? Very surprising because they had so much success early. All right, so spread formation still under the center, and they're going to spread it's it out to run it. Nice spin move there by Barrett, H by Barrett Hudson, running tough, breaking a couple tackles. Well, he, you know, the Mustangs had him bottled up right there, and that's all Hudson because that that wasn't the great, greatest block. And it's interesting to see, you know, they had so much success going heavy, heavy, heavy. They tried to spread them there, and they made that running back make a play, and he did it. It's just kind of – when they look at the tape tomorrow, the Mustangs are going to realize there was some poor tackling right there. 
Getting up off the bottom of the pile was number 39, Mitch Ottenreath. Well, they, they're not spreading us out again. Yeah, back to their more traditional look here of a tight end and a fullback. Back under center as well. They're going to run the stretch play here. It's Jake Ferris trying to gain the edge. Tell you what, that kid's fast. Yeah. Ferris who really hits that perimeter. If they don't, if they get a block on that uh, outside linebacker, it's a problem. He did. He had he had his outside shoulder there. That was a very good block. Looked like somebody's sh shaking up for the Mustangs. They're going to bring in another safety here. Yeah, that's Riddle coming out of the game. Hmm. Riddle and Auden Reed. So both of the starting ins or two of the starting linebackers are going to come out. Checking into the game is number 41, Dominic Panera, the junior. Don Panera can flat out play football. This is a. Uh, just a shuffle here. He's going to do a good job for the Mustangs. Well, he just looks the part, doesn't he? Physical. All right, two receivers down to the bottom of your screen. With a tight end down here, it's kind of an unbalanced set. They're going to go heavy to the bottom of your screen. There's four receivers down here. Yeah, they're just going to overload and run the stretch play. Speaking up, Panera on the first play makes a tackle there. Great job. But the Spartans are running downhill, man. They picked up seven, eight yards right there on that carry. <laughs> Getting chippy again, number 60. Uh, had to pull back one of his teammates for the Spartans. That was uh, Jason Manrique. Had to pull back one of his teammates. Who's kind of getting getting into a little bit of a shoving match. A lot of substitution for the Mustangs here. Klingberg's yeah. coming Klingberg's off. Coming out. And it just <laughs> he didn't seem too happy about it either. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Maybe a little sip of water and back in. Sure. I'm not sure we need a personnel change. I think we need a formation change. Under center here with t only 10 seconds left to go on the play clock. So you can tell seven lakes. Uh, have, with the seven point lead, they're really trying to drain some clock. They're going to fake the jet sweep to Lake and hand it off inside to Jake Ferris. Good job there by Cade West to fight the block and kind of was able to trip Ferris up. Oh man, somebody just flopped right there. I don't know. That's <laughs> not going to work, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was great strategy. Another interesting thing Mustang's got number 18, John Kafka, in the ball game. You know, the kid's been a quarterback, one of the smartest kids I've ever coached. True. Do, he was doing hand signals in second grade. He's a real bright kid, and uh, it was quite the advantage when we were playing flag football and you could check off the place with hand signals. Uh, so he's out outside linebacker right now. Look for him to make some big plays. Big kid playing out there in space right now. Under center is Patel. You're going to throw a quick game here. You're going to just throw the quick stop to the sophomore receiver. He caught the first touchdown of the game. That's Ryan Fowler. Man, Fowler's been great. And Patel is just, man, you give him time and he's steady and he's get those feet set. He puts that ball right on the spot. I thought he was shaking after taking a, a tough hit on a, on a long third down earlier. But he has, uh, boy, that didn't, that didn't affect him whatsoever. Very crucial the Mustangs stop him here, Coach, because of the reality of the situation, this has kind of been a back-and-forth contest. And two scores in a game like this is a big deal. Nice open field tackle there by Monty Self on the last play. Second down, five yards to go. There's that tight end and wing back set up top. They like that kind of look there. But they're going to motion back to balance up the formation. They're going to fake the stretch. Here's the bootleg wide open in the oh, missed an opportunity there. The uh, H-back came wide open. That was number 84, Carter Hatton. Do yeah. offensive guys have to do push-ups? Yeah, <laughs> offensive guys do have to do push-ups, even the opposing opponent there. Hatton just flat out dropped that football. And I'll tell you what, the Mustangs were fortunate there. They were in a bind. Well, Jason, you know, with, with nine new starters on defense, do you think some of the substitution we're seeing is that in game number one, Coach Koch is still just seeing who is going to, you know, who he wants to play, like giving everybody reps as kind of an evaluation process? I'm wondering about that, but, uh, you know, defending your own 27-yard line is not the time to – yeah, you know, to, I think this to, is just a to tough ball reps, game. You know? I don't think. Tough physical ball game in the heat, first game of the year. I think it's all hands on deck. All right, there's the motion. They're going to hand it off to Fowler. Good job there by number 18 is go. the first guy there. John Kafka right John there. John Kafka, you called it, the yeah. sophomore. Yeah, Kafka's always made those kind of plays. Even at the, you know, youth football, he's always made that kind of play. It's a little different th feel for him playing up that outside linebacker. But he got up up feel there, and that was a critical, critical play because that was a third and five. Now you put him in a fourth and ten. The Spartans might go for it here. They're kind of in no man's land, but maybe they rely on Patel. It's interesting yeah. to see what they do, uh, the Mustangs do on defense. Do they bring pressure here? Because the one thing he's proven, if you give him time, he'll make you pay. And if they don't gain a yard, that would be a 50-yard field goal. So it's probably, out, I'm assuming, outside the range of fairness. He's a great high school kicker, but that's, that, that's a tall order. They're spreading them out here. It's going to be interesting the Mustangs pull some pressure. Mustangs going to just rush three, but linebacker comes late. But there was... Either timeout or a penalty, huh? Delay game. 
to. That's just the memorial crowd being too loud. Yeah, the bums are still here. I don't know where the babes are, but the bums have stayed for the second half. And I apologize. I, I didn't even – I did not realize I was forced down there. So now it's going to bring the punt team out. So fourth and ten. They look the like they 30. did that delay game on purpose there to get it by extra rounds, five yards. Yeah. Back deep again is the fearless returner, Carter Wall. I got to tell you, you got to be brave to Carson catch – Carson Carson Wall. Be brave to catch punts back there. A little yeah. bit of a low snap. Good job there by Mills to field that. Go. And it's going to get a memorial bounce into the end zone for yeah. a touchback. Yeah, that's going to put it back at the 25. I say this, the the, the the snapping on the Spartan side has been a little shaky. you got to think somebody in the memorial press, uh, uh, coaching's box is looking at that and see if they can bring pressure one time and make a big play on special teams. They've already made uh, – Isaac Otto Richardson made a big touchdown re run on that kickoff, and another play in the punt game probably could come up if the Mustangs just take advantage of that. So good stuff. The defense bends but does not break. They get the stop, and it's going to give the offense the ball back at their own 20-yard line. I'll tell you, those drives have been so sustained. That defense needs a rest. The Memorial offense really needs to put something together, even if they don't score. That play by Kafka really really stopped that drive. That was an excellent an excellent turn of events. Agreed. All right. Calling signals is Salters. He's going to run the bootleg. Oh, there's a guy open down the he field. Recovery and broken up by number seven for the Spartans, Jediah Kelvin. Man, Kelvin just made a great recovery on that because he was truly burnt. Salters and, was still fading to his left and couldn't get enough underneath that and, ball. And that was Luke Bone that was able to get behind the defense. Yeah, you know, when he's rolling out to the left like that as a right-handed quarterback, it's just kind of a tough throw to make that 30, 30 yards down the field. Um, but they had an opportunity there. They've had several opportunities here this evening. And Calvin uh, going to be subbed out of the game for, uh, you know, only a junior there, defensive back. For letting the receiver behind him. And it's going to be, looks like trips down here. Three receivers to the bottom of your screen. One receiver up top, spread formation. Gindorf is in front of Salters here, so it looks like a passing formation. Gindorf on the wheel again. Going to throw the then wheel again. There, he is. there it is. Caught! T taps his toes inside, gets both feet in. That would be good in the NFL. Cooper Gindorf showing off the receiving skills. That was an unbelievable play because it, it was act, seven lakes looked like they knew it was coming and still couldn't stop it, Jason. I agree. Number 11 is going to get invited to the bench here. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. For a firm <laughs> talking to. Yeah. Us. Actually, it's they're ignoring him. It's a tough spot to play. Well, Anyone's that ever started. done it knows it. Memorial going fast now, a little faster. They, they feel some of that momentum. There's a nice handoff. A big hole inside for Gindorf getting into the secondary. Gindorf's got to be their go-to guy here. He's one of, one of the couple guys that they has that complete breakaway speed, and they need to keep feeding them football here. He's tapping his helmet. He's going to take a playoff after two long carries. And checking in is Comiskey. Number 38, Corbin Comiskey, the junior running back. And it's, you can kind of feel the momentum starting to shift a little bit here as Memorial gets a couple back-to-back -back big plays. It's been back and forth, but, boy, they got to really capitalize. Salters calling signals, three receivers to the top of your screen. Going to pull the left guard around, lots of space again. Upended, uh, there is Comiskey. I tell you what, Robbo just completely destroyed his guy right there when he pulled. That was a, just a fantastic block. He's a sophomore, but, man, he is super, super strong. He is. That kid, uh, he, he can put up some weight uh, on the squat rack. No question. So we've got a second and six here. Memorial gets four yards. Running a lot of clock here, Coach. And it, you know, you got to capitalize in these situations. I'd like to see Van Wee touch that football in some capacity. I would, too. Two backs stacked to the right side of Salters. Two receivers up top. And there's a little bit of pre-snap motion there. So that'll back up the Man, those are so painful in these situations, kind of when you're – getting five or six yards every time, and, and then all of a sudden you're in a second and 11 situation versus second and six. Just a big deal to get those type of penalties. And this is exactly what you asked for, Jason, was a little bit of time for that defense to rest on the sideline. Offense is delivering. That, that penalty sets them back a little bit. It'll be interesting to see who they put back in the lineup when the defense takes the field again. I think that'll give us our answer as to what was Coach looking for, a breather a breather, or some reps. I do see a guy on the bench with shoulder pads off. His leg is up on the – I'm going to mm. see if I can get my binoculars in between plays here and see who that is. But there is an injured Mustang on the bench. Yeah, he's not coming back for sure. Salters. Hey, looking to pass. Salters oh, on the post of Van Wee! Just a bit too far for the big junior wideout. 
Man, that was so close. So close. Yeah, and that was a good opportunity. Unfortunately, I think the corner just figured out that Will's faster than he is, and he's going to start giving him a little more room than that. Yeah, Spartan defense kind of held up. We we're very fortunate right there. That's going to make it third and 11. And just like the Spartans earlier, the Mustangs, if they can get six or seven yards, they might decide to go for it there, uh, the way their defense played that last drive. The injury is to the right ankle of the player, and he, uh, Matthew Lewis is sitting there with him. So I mean, maybe it's, it's a fellow safety. I think it was for sure. All right, here you go. Big third down here for the Mustangs. Third and 11. It's possibly straight over there on the sideline. Salters stepping up, throwing! Oh, pass intended, I believe, for number 12 for the Mustangs. Again, Luke Bohm getting behind the defense here, but just couldn't quite connect. Man, those are two big plays, but he overthrew them about two yards both situations. Mustangs are going to have to punt, but not a completely disastrous drive there. You know, they were able to pick up probably 25, 35 yards right there, and they gave their defense a much-needed rest. Need a good punt here. Look for the special teams to make some type of big play in this ball game. Again, the Spartans sent Easterling, the, the standout inside linebacker, back deep to field this kick. Seven Lakes has played an extremely clean game thus far. Good snap. Gindorf sends it away. Gonna be no return. It's gonna bounce and take another. Was taking a favorable bounce. Now it's gonna die inside the 20 yard line. We'll step away for a quick break and be right back here on Bite. We're back. Going to run a little counter play back up to the top of your screen. Uh, again, it's number 35, Cade West making the tackle, but it's a nice first down play. And it looks like, oh, number 24 for the Mustangs, uh, Monty Self kind of just coming up a little bit gingerly on that ankle. I'll tell you what, everybody's kind of getting banged up in this one. It's a physical contest and really is going to come down to who owns the line of scrimmage here coming up in the late end of this third quarter and going into this fourth quarter. Second down, four yards to go. 225 remaining here in the third quarter. It's been a great ball game. We saw two touchdowns in the opening 20 seconds, and then now as things have kind of settled in. Spartans lead by seven. Mustangs showing blitz. They're going to bring Riddle down. Inside handoff. And again, just, just testing the heart of the defense there of the Spartans. Well, you know, if you believe in your two backs, right, this is where it's crucial that, that they're going to make a big drive here and be physical. And they know that Memorial's defense has banged up and been out there for quite a few plays there. So they're going to try to establish that run here and establish that line of scrimmage and uh, try to pound them for sure. It's kind of cool, this this, this uh, running back by committee approach between Barrett Hudson and Jake Ferris. I mean, they – they both seem to be each other's biggest fan. I don't sense any kind of animosity about who's getting more touches. I mean, they just keep alternating, and they're both doing well. There's an inside handoff this time to Ferris. Breaking tackles Ferris into the secondary. Man, I tell you what, Ferris mm. is such a hard runner. He's got such great balance, too, every time he goes through there. Uh, Mustangs are having tough. But, you know, Coach, the reason they, they don't mind – you know, sharing carries there. It's just such a tough physical game. And anybody who's ever played running back knows that you get drilled there more than anywhere else. So it's amazing to me at the NFL level that they don't pay those guys like they pay everybody else. But obviously they're a dime a dozen. All right. Spartans, fresh set of downs. Under center is Patel, the sophomore quarterback. He's going to do a little quick game here. They're going to throw the quick hitch complete to the senior captain at wide receiver, Davis Yates. Nice open field tackle there by number 23, Andre Pierre. First time we're calling that name, the junior defensive back for the Mustangs. Yeah, you know, Kafka got his hands on that football. I thought he got his hands on that. And, and tipped it up just, you know, just not enough, but just enough to disrupt it. And, man, Seven Lakes made a great catch there. That's going to set him up with a second and seven. Here they go tight, Jumbo. Uh, watch that fullback. He'll probably tell you where that ball's going tight end to the bottom of your screen. You're going to watch number 35, Gary Dang. And coach is right. Juice is correct. Dang kicks out the defensive end and 
Again, Spartans just plowing into the middle of that line. Man, they get physical when they need them to, and it, it's going to be interesting. If they finish this drive, it's going to be quite the challenge for the Mustangs to come back here. You think this is one of those those times, Jason, where you know where where, where Coach Koch just tells those safeties almost play in there like linebackers? And I know you're you're leaving yourself for the play action like that first play of the game, but does Memorial have to do that at this point to stop this inside run? I think they do. I think they need to put a guy deep and uh, and bring somebody else. This is we're, we're simply giving up five or six every time they want it. Okay, seven lakes. Look at this heavy set down here. Tight end, two tight ends towards the bottom of your screen. We brought a guy in here. There's another inside handoff. Good patience there again by Barrett Hudson. Wow. Tackle eventually going to be made by number 70 for the Mustangs. Uh, it's another name we're calling for the first time, the sophomore, Evan Paul. We loaded the box there, and uh, they still had success. Man, Hudson, it, it, it's just shifty, man. He's Excellent just like run. jumping. Him. He, his first jump cut is just fantastic. That's going to end the ha uh, quarter here. We can go into the fourth quarter. Seven Lakes, what, got a 21-14 lead here, seven points in driving the football. All right. We would, of course, love to thank the families of MHS football for making this all possible. And we'll, we're going to have our fourth quarter uh, game plan here, and it's going to be brought to you by Brandon Bohm in Texas Tea Tavern, 1535 Britmore Road, Houston, Texas. Well, fellas, in order for us to go to the tavern tonight and celebrate in style, we need to win this ball game. How are we going to do it? 12 minutes to go, down seven. Well, they're going to have to get a big touch here, you know, big, big stop here for sure. But, you know, Gendorf and Salters and Van Wee are probably the skill set guys that are going to make the play on offense if Memorial is going to persevere here. But they're really going to have to come up big and stop this pounding O-line that's going in these jumbo sets. Like I said, anytime you watch that fullback, he's literally going to lead you to the football most of the time, especially when they're offsetting him in motion like that. All right, here we go. 12 minutes remain. Mustangs trail by 7, 21 to 14. I'd be shocked if they don't hand it off right here to the right side. We'll see. Yeah, fullback offset towards the bottom of your screen to the offense's right. We'll try to follow him on this play like Juice is saying. There's the power play again. Yeah, there's a kick out by the fullback. Coming back inside to make the play is number 42 for the Mustangs, Edward G. Edward Gray. That guy lives on Jason Street. He lives on my street. <laughs> Good job there by Edward Gray to defeat that kickout block and fold back inside to make the play. He's a nice kid. He's not the best looking guy I've ever seen. Uh, he's his well, he's well mannered. His mother would argue with that. <laughs> his mother's good looking. For sure. Fresh set of downs here for the Spartans. They're doing a good job. He's working methodically here, trying to burn play clock. 11.30 remaining to go in the fourth quarter. They do a lot of motions pre-snap. There's a stretch. Oh, a lot of penetration from Otto Richardson. He didn't quite make the tackle, but he's able to slow down Hudson enough uh, for number 18, Kafka, to come back in there and clean it up. Yeah, John Kafka knocked it out. That's crazy. These two kids have been playing together the whole time. And I tell you, it's interesting, uh, Jason, as the game is worn on, I don't know if it's injury, but Coach has really been getting those two guys on the field. Otto is such a fantastic blitzer. If there's any one knock, you got to just be, be a little bit under control right at the end. But there's no doubt there's no offensive line on Seven Lakes to stop in his penetration. Yeah, it looks like Kafka's made his way into the linebacker rotation. Yeah, a pair of sophomores getting in there. Pair of sophomores. Yeah, big fizzle kids, but they're two of the better players on this team. Edward Gray, only a junior, made the play before. So, I mean, a lot of underclassmen starting to show out here for the Mustangs. Quick quick pass uh, deflected. Was that 78? They couldn't see. They got 18. That's 18. John 18? Kafka. Kafka again. Okay. Kafka again. You got to remember, John's, what, 6'2", 6'3". Big kid, long arms, and he's got that, got that reach. And he's just... At the end of the day, he's completely football suave. He's going to be in the right spots, and he understands the situations. Klingberg checks back into the game. I didn't realize Klingberg wasn't out there, so the senior is going to check back in. He's fired up. He just gave a, a big high five to Kafka and said, hey, let's go. Well, it's a critical situation here. You got third and ten. Look for Patel. He's going to let this thing rip. They're, they're spreading us here. Third and ten for the Spartans after the deflected pass. Mustangs blitzing. It's picked up, going deep on the post route! Just a bit behind the intended receiver, Ryan Fowler. It just forced him to kind of come back for it a little bit, but he was open there in between the safeties. Was that Gullage out there? I believe it was, Brett, that made that play. Number 10, he looks like he's coming up limping it. Anderson Strait was covering a little bit there, too. Another sophomore, Brett Gullage. A lot of lot of 10th graders out there on the, on the Mustang D, and they're able to – Get the big stop, force a fourth down, and I think they're going to go for it here. Yeah. It looks like they're set up to go for it. And that's just a great play. 
fourth down, you kind of no man's land. I've got to tell you, Seven Lakes knows how critical this is. A little bit of a bobbled snap. Pressure comes. Good. Patel escaping, throwing complete to Fowler, and it's going to be well short of the first down, I believe. Give us a good spot. He's it's gonna, just, that's a good spot. He's going to be a three yard charts and three yard charts, and who made the tackle? Otto Richardson. Man. On the sideline. Otto from, Richardson, from really? The linebacker. Man, he's just a fast, rangy kid, and he's one of the guys that, like, obviously he's had came up playing really good football. But the big deal with Otto is like he's just grown so much in the last six to eight months. Yeah, I saw him. Uh, I didn't recognize him. Uh, he's tall and thin. He's still got those size 12 shoes, though. Yeah, and he has the ability to, yeah, maybe, I think they I think might he be always 14, wore 12. 12 or 14. But anyway, he's got a, a lot of upside, too, to put on some more weight. Mustang spread him with trips to the right here. Huge drive here. Down 7, 10 17 left to go in the ball game. Salters of Comiskey in the backfield. Going to pull the right guard around. Comiskey gaining the edge, running over the corner there. Uh, Kamitsky did a good job of running some power football. They kind of caught seven legs off guard a little bit. They were spread out to the other side there, and Kamitsky kind of caught it to the back edge. Yeah, the defensive end on this side got sucked in, and the edge was wide open. What did he get there, eight? Good eight. Yeah, great play on first down. Jackson Graham going to check into the game. He's going to line up in a, a wingback position here at the bottom of your screen. Still Kamitsky in the backfield of Salters. Shotgun snap, inside handoff. Nice cut back there. Comiskey finding space, and he's eventually going to be brought down by number 24 for the Spartans, uh, Keaton Fowler Smith. And they they kind of found a backside run here. You know they've been going on the other side the whole game here, and they're coming back to this weak side here. And it's, it's interesting because they're spreading them out on the other side. They got trips like making them a cover, but they're coming back to the weak side. All right, Mustangs look to the sideline. It's going to be interesting. They're having such success, but, boy, the Spartan defense has really been hard to pound and ground it all night long without some type of big play to score. So Mustangs are going to have to make some kind of big play to put this in the end zone. Shotgun. Calling signals as Salters. Another inside handoff. They're getting a lot of space. Safety has to come up to make the t tackle. That was number – making sure the ball didn't come out there. Uh, number 15 – Makes the tackle there for the Spartans, Will Krennic. That is roughly the same play three times in a row. It really is. And Salters has done a good job with the play fake, making the uh, Spartans think that he's throwing the football there. Uh, Kamitsky, man, give him credit. Come in here in the fourth quarter, fresh legs and running hard. Agreed. Yeah, you're seeing a, this uh, a, approach where there's a lot of depth from both of these teams. Yeah, you know, they're every kid, on, I can't say much, I don't know as much for about seven legs, but every kid on the Mustangs sideline has basically played in this football game. Agreed here. 8-18 left to go in the ball game. Salters calling signals. Going to fake the handoff. Going to throw to Van Wee complete on the hitch route. Man, it's Van Wee looks so smooth right there. They really just got to figure out a way to consistently get him the football. That was a pretty good catch. No, it was a great catch for sure. That ball was thrown a little low and behind him, and he was able to pick it up and get another three or four out of it. Well, I tell you, they just what, cross midfield here. They got the ball at the 42-yard line, eating a lot of clock here, so they need to make this one count. Yeah, this has been one of the better drives of the evening uh, for the Mustangs. A little short motion there for Fowler. There is the inside handoff again. Kamiski getting into the secondary! And Kamiski going to be brought down inside the 15-yard line. There's a flag there. It's a big flag. It's a holding. Holding or holding. chop block. 44 yeah, is really upset for I the Spartans. I think he got shot blocked. Yeah, I think you're right, Juice. Holding it is, but, man, that's, I'll tell you what, that's going to be a big, that's a 35-yard swap right there. Hmm. Yep, don't know who blocked him, but, boy, i tell you what, it, it, that is something you don't want to see because kids get injured that way. Yeah, it's just so interesting. I mean, all of a sudden, I mean, the, the running game has been solid all night, but it's just really come to life here on this drive. Well, they did a good job of mixing it up. They're actually kind of going to the backside of where their, their trips are set and running the football. And give Kamitsky credit. He's fresh legs, and he's running hard, and he was pretty elusive on that last play. But, boy, I tell you what, that was a big down-and-distance flip right there. Instead of inside the 20-yard line, now you're back in your, your territory, and you're facing, like, first and 22. 
What do you do here? Well, you got to go. You got to rely on your quarterback to still make p plays. Try to get one to Van Wee right here. He's your quarterback's playing better and better as the half is going on. He's your guy. Run with him. I would right. think about throwing him a screen pass here. Salter he stepping up wide open across the middle, complete. Running down the sideline, getting past the defenders into the end zone for a touchdown. Carson Wall. Man, Carson Wall just was amazing on that cross from right. But give Salter's credit. He put it right on the money where it gave his guy a chance to make the play. The Spartans missed a couple of tackles, and all of a sudden we got a chance to tie this ball game. Looked a little bit like Kyle Siblick, didn't it, Coach? It did. I would agree. That was a Siblick type play there from 48 yards out. Man, coming out to that penalty was just absolutely huge. Big, big confidence boost there. Ran it down their throats, had a few penalty or a penalty, a big penalty. Still, we were able to get five and eight and 40 anytime we needed it. Tie the game up. A little show, bit of confusion here on hard. the extra points. Sorry, there's somebody who was, didn't come in, but. I'll tell you that with this. Salter's the holder. This, Nine on the play clock. This, this is one time you use your timeout right here. You don't yeah, want to rush You need this one. You need this kick. Kick is it's away. Good. And it is good. Guys, what takes so long? Yeah. I got a, yeah, I'm sorry. I was a little rushing on that. Uh, yeah, I know. I would have felt pretty bad if I got that one wrong. But thank goodness it looked good from the get-go. All right. The kick is good. We will step away for a quick break. Don't go anywhere. we got a tie ball game. 7.07 left to go here in the fourth quarter on Vibe. All right, after the 48-yard touchdown pass uh, from uh, Jackson Salters to Carson Wall, we are knotted at 21 apiece. Matthew Lewis set to kick it away. There, a low, hmm. low kick. Gonna Man, that must have tight and touched, and this is going to be a problem. It's going to be bobbled. Here comes Fowler, the sophomore. Wow, he's going to be brought down inside the 10-yard line, so... Huge momentum shift. I'll tell you who made that tackle again on the kickoff. Kafka. I mean, these young guys are really coming of age here in the second half. Super, super talented, getting their opportunity to make plays. And this is really this is the drive that's going to set this ball game right here. You got a 21-21 game, coach. You know the Spartans didn't have a great drive last time, and they're deep in their own territory. And uh, this is really going to see who's going to who, who's going to will this victory. And this this game is going exactly identical to what we thought coming into this deal. Make and a play. Again, I just noticed Klingberg isn't out there. I wonder if he's dealing with some sort of ailment. Man, he might be cramping out here. Yeah, it's so hot so. and humid. Yeah. All right. Biggest drive of the game for the Spartan offense, starting at their own 10-yard line. There's their pro formation. One tight end to the bottom. It's going to be an inside ISO play. Good start for the Spartans. I tell you what, boy, the line did a great job for Seven Lakes right there. I think that's 68. That just uh, 58. My bad. That just blew him up on the right side. Somebody's cramping yeah, for the Spartans. Yeah, there's Barrett cramping, I believe. Well, we hope that he's cramping. We'll we'll step away uh, for the injury timeout. We'll be right back here on Vibe.
right, welcome back. Nice play on first down. That was uh, it was the senior captain Barrett Hudson who went out with cramping, so he should be okay. Just gonna need to get that worked out. They're gonna run the power play again, uh, folding his way back inside, and making the tackle eventually as number 35. Uh, for the Mustangs, the senior captain, Cade West. Cade West has had a good night here. I mean, made a bunch of plays here. The, here comes Klingberg here, and they're shuffling guys in. I just think, honestly think it's hot, it's humid, yeah. and they're trying to play as much of a rotation as they possibly can. They're just trying to figure a couple things out. But this is a third and two. You got to think the Spartans are going to give it to their guy right here. Watch that fullback. He's been shuffling to wherever he's going all night. He's all set to the left right now. Two receivers up to the top of your screen, twins formation. Here Linebackers, yeah, they're in tight. Here comes Dang in motion. It's going to be the ISO That's play. It. Lots of penetration. Number 18 for John the Mustangs. Kafka did it again, man. Just John Kafka. <laughs> unbelievable, yeah. mate. Big play after big play. Like I said, he's a very, very smart kid. And when he sees that guy motioning, he knows there's a good chance they're going to give that handoff to him. And he made yet another play. I love what you pointed out about Kafka. He's, he's listed as a quarterback slash outside linebacker. You don't always see that combination. Yeah, and when he gets the ball, he can actually really run the football. He looks like, you know, galloping down the sideline. So another big play. He's had some huge plays here in the second half. 5.25 left to go. There's the snap. Mills kick away. It's a high hanging kick. And it's going to take a wow. memorial bounce. Very good bounce. Man, that's unbelievable. That's like a 12-yard bounce the other way. Wow, that was... That was just over a 10-yard punt. Here we go. This offensive line is going to have to come out here and dictate this deal. But, man, I tell you, you got to be so impressed with the way the Mustangs have gathered themselves in the second half. A couple times in this ball game, you thought like they for sure they were on the other end of the deal. Matter of fact, the Spartans had a chance a couple times to make it out to a two-touchdown lead, 14-point lead, and the Spartans I and mean, Mustangs just clamped down and made it happen. Mustangs have three timeouts. Spartans have two. We're five minutes to go here. This is a really tough spot for the Seven Lakes defense. You know, Coach Koch is going to want to work that clock here as well. It was a brilliant drive for our Mustangs on, on the last possession. Going to motion Fowler on a short motion. Pull the left guard. Inside handoff. Gindorf, Gindorf yeah. getting to the edge. Cooper Gindorf to the house. Man. No flags. Touchdown. That was just impressive. No doubt about it. Gindorf broke one tackle, bounced it to the outside, showed why he has that type of speed, 4-5, four, 4-4, four, four, whatever it is, 4-6. Kid was flat out flying, and you know if anybody's getting tired in this defense, tired in this game, coach, it might be the Spartans because yeah. they they looked the you know like the the will Boy. of the Mustangs has really paid off here in the fourth Lots quarter. Lots of yellow flags flying through the air. I'm not sure what that's about. It almost has to be a celebration or an unsportsmanlike. Well, we've All already right. seen that cost There's one team. Celebration on us or unsportsmanlike on them. And their coach is talking to their guy who's taken off his helmet. Well, it would be a big deal if it's on this extra point, i can tell you that. Yeah, I think it was against Seven Lakes, potentially. Coach Koch is out there at the hash mark. This guy is a very disciplined guy. i tell you, he doesn't like all this stuff. The referee's talking about it. Big play here. i tell you, the Mustangs would have loved to eat that clock a little bit, Jason, but they'll take that touchdown all day long. Absolutely. Well, maybe it's, it actually looks like the officials are coming to talk to the Seven Lakes coaches, so maybe it's against the Mustangs. Trying to think. Yeah, he doesn't have the most affirmative body language right now, the uh, Seven Lakes coach. It looks like he's defending himself. Yeah, I agree, agreed, yeah. I think it's... Coming up on 11-25, they just need to make a call. It is against the Spartans, though. Yeah. They had a... On the kickoff, coach, they're going to do that deal. That's going to put them up about – they're going to kick that ball off like what, right at the 50-yard line. So what do you do there? Do you just let him kick it through the end zone and spot him the 25? Or well, do Lewis you, uh... has been doing that all night long, and I'll tell you what, it's not a bad time to squib that deal when you're kicking it from there. It worked last time whether it was on purpose or not. Yeah, here comes a crucial extra point. Every one of them in this ball game has been big. You called it earlier. What what an impressive fourth quarter here from the Memorial Mustangs. Totally agree. I mean, they just totally gutted out this deal. I mean, it, they're a long way from finishing it, but they have really showed some real toughness here, and their young players have really come on here in the second half. The kick is away, and it is good. So our score, 5-0-5, left to go in the ballgame. Mustangs retake the lead, 28-21 over the Spartans. We'll be right back for a fantastic finish here on Vibe.
right. So after the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty that was enforced here on the kickoff, the uh, Mustangs will actually be kicking from the Spartans side of the field here from the, the, the Seven Lakes 45-yard line. Wow, that was a big penalty. But, man, what do you do here? You, you kick it in the back of the end zone or you try to squib it down there and pin them? You know, this is a, a crucial play here, and it's by no means a give me just because you're kicking from inside their territory. If it wasn't for the chaos of a, of a booted uh, reception, I would, I would vote squib. They squibbed it. There it, it. is. You know, they got a perfect one. Boy, that's a great bounce. Uh, seven, lakes got a, anyway. seven Lakes was fortunate there. It hopped over their head. That's exactly what Memorial didn't want because that's going to put the ball out at the 25-yard line. And you got to wonder, you know, one head of that two-headed monster, uh, Barrett Hudson, left the game in the last drive with cramps. You wonder if he'll be able to go or if it's going to be all Jake Ferris on this drive. They also called time, uh, Seven Lakes called timeout trying to receive a punt with uh, – Two minutes gone in the second half, though, so they're down to two timeouts. You yeah. know, the Spartans are going to make a play, though, man. They, 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 Patel had such a big first half. We really haven't heard much from him in here in the fourth quarter. They're going to really rely on it. I don't blame them. They were leaning on that running game because it was working. But if they're going to get back and drive this ball 75 yards, Patel's going to have to be a part of it. Motion across the formation. Gray coming down into the formation. Going to run the bootleg. White, the open in the flat is Hatton. Hatton going to be knocked out of bounds by yeah. number 24 for the Mustangs, Monty Self. I mean, that was a great throw by, by Patel. Just a real confidence builder. They made an easy toss for him out there into the flats, and he was able to turn up the field and get it up 12, 13 yards there. All right, so nice start for the Spartans. Just under five minutes remaining here in the ball game. Stop the clock as well. Got to be careful with the guy out flanked out there to the left that made that big touchdown to start the ball game. Seems like four hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, might, it probably was four hours ago. All right, tight end, fullback in the game, inside handoff. A little bit of space oh there. Barrett Hudson careening into the secondary, gonna eventually going to be uh, brought down again by number 18, John Kafka. Yeah, John's played a big half here, but, boy, that was a big gapping run there. Mustang's trying to rotate folks in here. Everyone's completely exhausted and understandably so. Yeah, we were talking about it during the break. It's going to come down to conditioning, it kind of feels like. And really, Memorial looks like they've been the fitter team throughout the fourth quarter, but Seven Lakes making one last kind of valiant push here. Give them credit. they got three plays here for 25 yards. Going to pass. Going to throw the quick hitch, complete. Hmm. Nice open field tackle there by number three for the Mustangs, William Daly, the junior corner. Man, I'll tell you what, that was a great play by Daly because you are truly out there by yourself. And if you don't make that tackle, he turns that ball up and could possibly score. And that pass is complete to number 83, Kaiser Floyd, the junior Daly, immediate, Daly immediately took himself off the game and onto the bench holding his leg. It's and it. now he's down on the turf. You know, Patel does a really good job when he's playing ahead of the sticks here. It's going to be interesting to see if Memorial can somehow get him in – those long distance situations. But right here at second and four, they look like they're going jumbo heavy over here to the right. They're going to hand it off. There's your motion. There it is. Come on, come on, my ball 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 ball. Wow, oh, Barrett wow, Hudson somehow ball. put him away with it. He's still going. I don't know how he was able, that ball was being juggled in the air by Barrett Hudson. Now he scooped that thing in and the he's air. he's cramping. Hudson's cramping too? Yes, he's down. Well, man, I'll tell you what, that kid is a good football player, but everybody's cramping at this point. It's just so nice stiff on there, but it's just so interesting. You know, Seven Lakes, with only with under four minutes to go, they were not in a hurry. You know, they're, they're just going to keep running their methodical offense, and I feel like they feel like they need to win it on this drive. Well, they've only run a minute and 22 seconds off this clock since they started at some the 25, plays, 25. Yeah. They've had some big plays. Richardson made a saving tackle right there. Man, heavy to the right. Watch that fullback. Here's your motion. Going to run the power toss. Trying to gain the edge is Ferris, and he does. Able to, ah, oh, they might get yeah, that's Oh, that's big. They're going to get a late hit out-of-bounds penalty. The ball was tackled, uh, what would you say, juice around the 15. And so it should be maybe, what, a half the distance of the goal penalty, I'd imagine. That'd so it's going to be inside the 10-yard line. Yeah. Come on, Mason. You know better than that, kid. Riddle made a tough play right there. You're playing hard, and, boy, I tell you, those are the kind of things that cost you. Now we're going to get set that thing up at the 7-yard line. It's going to be first and goal. And the clock is no longer a factor here, Coach. They, they really got to figure out a way to stop them, or we're going to have a tied ball game and possibly looking at overtime. And if you're seven legs, you almost maybe don't want to score too fast because that memorial offense. It's clicking. It's clicking. But I'll point. tell you what, people are exhausted, and every time you go out there, it's harder and harder to make the same results. Agreed. All right. 
if you've stuck with us this far, it is 11.32 at night. You are a trooper. You are a true Mustang. And here we go. Th these I'm, are the critical plays. Don't I'm sweat it. The Texas overtime. Tavern's still open. <laughs> exactly. Two receivers up top. A lot of penetration! Great job there by number 59 for the Mustangs. Miles Reitman, the senior. Man, that was a big play that they had to have, right? In this drive, they haven't had any negative plays, the Spartans. And he came in. Miles did a just unbelievable job of penetrating right there and making something happen. Second 12. Well, second goal from the 12. And uh, here comes the three rotation. Three minutes there. left. Clock's running. The clock is four the, down territory. They're okay with their clock, right? The Mustangs just got to figure out a way to get off the field here. They're going back heavy to this right side. Yeah, two tight ends here to the bottom of your screen. Jake Ferris, the, the, the back in the backfield. Mustangs showing blitz. They're going to run the bootleg. Throwing it complete for a touchdown to number 84. That is Carter Hatton, the junior tight end. Man, I tell you what, they've been hurting him so bad with that overload play that Patton just did a good job of making him. you got to give Patel credit. He put it right on the money. Juice, really... Juice or Jason, let me ask you this. The Spartans' defense is exhausted. It's a non-district game, no playoff on the line. Do you think Coach ha uh, Coach Hammond considers going for two and just trying to win it here? Well, it's it wouldn't be a horrific idea. I tell you what, that kicking has looked a little shaky. I know they made them all, but the the Lewis for the Mustangs have come up a lot more cleaner on all the all of his kicks. They're going to take a time out here and talk about it. And you're you make a great point. They might pull a little Brian Kelly right here and try to go for the win. I could see that. And again, you guys have been singing his praises all night. The sophomore quarterback in the clutch. Coming up with a big play. They're finding his tight end. Yeah, we mentioned zone. it when this drive started. He really hadn't done anything in the second half, uh, you know, at least la the last couple of drives. But he was so good the first half. And, man, he showed a great presence right there, putting the ball right on the spot. I mean, he threw a deep post route a little behind a guy. But everything else he's thrown tonight has been a strike. I'm very impressed with him. Farina is they're coming out, yeah. They're going to kick it, though. Interesting. All right, I told you earlier in the break, I thought we were going to get one of these. Yep. You got to watch Klingberg. He's busted through a couple times. There's one time to put pressure on him. It's right here. That's for sure. That's why Coach Hammond took the timeout, tried to shore up his protection. Snap is good. Kick is away. And it looks like it is good. They got their cleanest look of the night right there. That was their best execution. I absolutely agree, Juice. All right, we will take a quick break, and then we're going to – that'll be our last break. We're going to probably stay through the end. Uh, 2.46 left to go in the ball game. Your score nodded at 28 apiece. Memorial and Seven Lakes here on Vibe. All right, welcome back. A Sean Patel punched, touchdown pass to number 84. Carter Hatton ties the score, and the squib kick will be falling on by the Mustangs. They'll have great starting field position at their own 34-yard line. A little surprised by that, but, you know, the, the, the Mustang returners, hey, when you get beat for a, a kickoff return early in the football okay. game, coaches do not have amnesia, right? So they remember that stuff, and they played it safe there. But Salters have been so effective here in the second half, balancing things out. You don't want to give them the ball at the 35-yard line with 246. The Mustangs have to execute better here in the fourth quarter than they did at the end of the half. All right. Speculating, what do you think uh, our kicker, what do you, what do you think his, uh, Matthew Lewis, what do you think his long range is on a field goal? Judging on those kickoffs, it's pretty long. 
Two backs in the backfield. Salter's calling signals. They're going to hand it off on the first play. Gindorf trying to gain the edge. He's going to cut back inside. There's a flag. It's probably a holding. That's a big flag right there. Anytime you push him back on that first play, but I said that earlier, and Salter's hit the big touchdown. At a certain point, you know, Memorial's going to be backed up here. If they get in a very long down and distance, do you think Coach Koch just runs the ball and tries to play for an overtime? Mm. I don't think so here. There's 2.38 left in this ball game. He's got, what, three timeouts? He's I think got three. Seven Lakes has two. The reality of the situation, he's got guys that have been proven to make plays on the outside. He's got a senior quarterback that he has confidence in. He's just got to let it rip. This is the football game that they want to win, and, and it's, it's there for the taking, but they're going to have to make up for that penalty. No foul. No Gonna foul. Wave that one off. Now it looks like they even marked it against Seven Lakes. It looks like Seven Lakes offside, so that's going to make it first and five, I think. Well, I th no, I think they waved off the penalty. So oh, it gave it'll them the, just be a gain of five. There. Gave them the actual play. The Mustangs would take that for sure. Absolutely. 2.38 left. Clock should start running any second here. They do reset it. This is where they have to be really critical to get that ball, to get that play in. Last time in the end of the first half, took way too long to do this. Salter sets them. Got Van Wee towards the bottom of your screen. Looking to throw. Salter stepping into it. Deep comeback route. A little bit uh, too high for number 20, uh, Co Trednik. Yeah, not a disastrous play, though, right? Because you stop the clock. You're third and five. You're kind of in a situation where, man, you make this one. You're really in a good spot if you convert. But you really don't want to give seven legs and put the ball back either. Coach, I'm running the statue play here, trying to get the bad guys to jump off sides. I'm trying to get the fast guy 25 the ball for sure. <laughs> We've seen the wheel route strike twice for big uh, gains, and one including a touchdown. We'll see don't what be, Memorial does here. Don't be surprised if you see a little sit-down curl in the flats here. All right, two receivers up top, two backs in the backfield, 217 left to go in the game. Salter standing and delivering. Man. Just a bit too far for Fowler. He wants a flag, and they are not going to get it in coverage for the Spartans. It was number 24, Keaton Fowler-Smith. Keaton Fowler-Smith just made a fantastic play. You know, he's been doing that almost all night when he's in one-on-one -on -one coverage there. Fowler had it in his hands. It looked like it shook loose right at the last second. Memorial, unfortunately here, fourth and five in their territory, the way the Spartans have been doing it all night long in the second half uh, here. They have no choice but to punt it. Interesting here, the Spartans going up two deep, man. They've always just had Easterling back in there, but now they got the sophomore Fowler. Seems like they definitely want to get a return. Here. Well, there's been so many knuckleballs, right? You don't yeah. know where that thing's going, so yeah. they definitely want to get it down. Mustang coverage team really got to come up big. It almost strikes me like Seven Lakes, does. they do not want to go to overtime. I think they're going to try to get good field position here. And they that's want to a try great to punt. That's a very good punt. I mean, fantastic great. punt, but that's going to be on the 30-yard line. One thing we've seen for sure, like the Spartans are going to come out here and gun this thing. They're going to throw the ball, and they're going to make the Mustangs stop them. Look at Austin Easterling, the senior captain, just sprinting over to the offense <laughs> and trying to fire them up. <laughs> yeah, the Mustang, we said it earlier, man. We, we may have misjudged this as a gut check, and the Spartans really came back and, and, and matched the uh, Mustang score. And here we are, two minutes and five seconds left in this ball game, 28-28. This is like a heavyweight prize fight. And just, these, these guys are playing for a reason. They are yeah. certainly even matched. All right, here we go. 2.05 left to go in an absolute classic, just like it always is when these two teams get together. Inside handoff. Look at the little jump cut there from Barrett Hudson getting upended. Eventually, that was number 27 who upended him. Uh, that is Anderson Strait, the senior. Yeah. Yeah, you know, a six-yard gain there. If you're the Mustangs, you probably take that just because you're running the clock there and, and stopping before you get the first down. got to remember, every time you reset those downs, you get a play stoppage for the, uh, the down and distance to reset so the clock stops. And, Juice, you were talking about this in pregame. Two years ago, the only time Seven Lakes has beaten Memorial in this series, it was a last-second field goal at Rhodes Stadium. Mm. All right, here is the snap. Going to throw the quick hitch outside. That's complete to number 12 for the Spartans, Owen Wade. And, again, that's William Daly on the tackle. And Daly's had his work cut out for him. They keep coming back at him. He makes play after play. Hadn't really let one get over the top on him in making this deal. They're going to reset the down and distance here. Clock's We're, running here. Now they're going fast. Yeah, 1 and 20. Patel's back in the shotgun now. Down to 115 on the clock. Patel throwing that route! Oh, reading that all the way was number 24 for the Mustangs. 
Monty Self saw that coming all the way. Monty Self did see that all the way. Man, that was such a big physical hit, too. That is one time where you wish he had, like if you're the Mustangs, that he actually caught that ball and run some clock there. One ten left in the ball yeah. game. The ball popped up out of his hands right when he didn't catch it. And, oh, another yard, and Mason Riddle would have been I was thinking the, the same races. thing, Jason. Yeah, that was pretty close to being intercepted as well in that deflection. You're absolutely right. Look for Klingberg to make a big play here. They really need it. You know, the Mustangs are in back coverage. They only got really three guys on the interior down, and their linebackers are out there sp playing in space. Trip set. Patel calling signals. Mustangs showing blitz from the top. You're going to set up the screen to Barrett Hudson. He's got some blockers. Boy, I tell you, oh, that was great a great recovery. recovery. Number 35, your senior captain at inside linebacker, Cade West. Man, he's made play after play, and that was none bigger than that one. Because the, the That's screen set is, up pretty nice. There the were blockers was, out there, and they thought Morio would bring pressure, and they had the right play call. It just West made it a great tackle. Forty-five seconds to go. Clock Look is running. Curl. Gonna throw the slant. It's complete. Should be good for a first down. Tackle made by number thirty-three again. That's Otto uh, Richardson. That's gonna move the chain. Stop the clock to move the chains. I wonder if he still cries when he gets tackled. I, I wouldn't say that, Coach. Probably not. <laughs> I think so, so that'll be a timeout taken, and uh, we'll take a quick timeout with him because I think we're going to have a bunch of timeouts here down the, down the stretch, and we'll be right back for the exciting finish here on Vibe. All right, we're back. 39 seconds left to go. Seven Lakes just burned a timeout. They have one remaining. Memorial has all three. And wow, hmm. big flag there. It's got to be a delay of game, right? No? Sideline? Or... Oh boy, what give the, give the bums move? credit for that. They're going nuts over there. The <laughs> offense probably couldn't hear. The bums get the credit right there. The hard hats are on. That's a tough yeah. crowd. <laughs> Man, the illegal procedure. Awesome. All right, big penalty there. Going to back up the Spartans. Got to get pressure on Patel. It's kind of in between deal here. Pressure coming, but good pocket. Going to try to throw the post intended for number 85 yeah. of Peter Noonan. Boy, that was a good throw. I'll tell you, Mustangs did bring pressure. The Spartan line uh, was able to, to pick up the blitz there. Uh, just a little overthrew that ball right there. 34 seconds left in this ball game. Spartans sit here at second and 15. You know, they're kind of caught in between, but they still have one timeout left. So they probably want to save that for a potential field goal if they can get in range. It's got to be careful, too, to make sure not to turn it over and lead for an opportunity for the Mustangs to score before regulation. But right now, the ball is in Seven Lakes Court. 34 seconds left to go. Patel calling signal, spread formation. He's got time. He's going to throw the deep out route a little bit too far intended. Well, what? Daly was in coverage. And I think that was intended for number 12, Owen Wade. Well, I'll tell you what, they're in a difficult spot here, third and 15. I would not be shocked to see them hand off this football and just go to overtime. I would tend to agree with you, Coach. I could see, I could definitely see Coach Hammond doing that. And, you know, he's allowed his defense to rest, at least of this drive, because, you know, they have looked gassed at times. Yeah, but it's going to be a big play here. They're trying to – yeah, they're spreading, but I would not be surprised if they hand it off. They got that jumbo tight end set here. Patel, gonna, yep, you're right. He's gonna hand it off oh, inside. Boy. Barrett Hudson! Barrett Hudson! Oh, that was a touchdown saving tackle by number 24, Monty Self. Man, big play there. That could have been the ball game, gentlemen. Monty Self with the effort to trip up Barrett. That Barrett Hudson runs like a man possessed as Self makes the touchdown saving tackle. Boy, it's a huge tackle right there. It's still got the play clock. It's down to 12, Doesn't 15. They have a timeout if they want it. I think they're going to hand it off and then call the timeout. Right. 
We'll see what this kick and kick. It's going to be what a 40, 41, 43. Didn't we say he need they need to get down to the twenty five and look at him? They're, they're down yeah. to the twenty foot six. At the break, we were speculating as to how. Where does Coach have to Down give to the, the field goal a try? It's going to be a 42-yarder, I would think, once he sets it back there. Yeah. And, you know, the snaps have been a little shaky all night, but the last extra point looked really good. One second left in this ball game, 28-28. The last, what did we say, none of these games have been more than five points, and it won't be that way tonight either. So it's been an amazing football game. Man, you got you got to tip your cap to Barrett Hudson, though. I mean, he a couple times he's really just stepped up in those clutch moments and been shifty, tough. I mean, just physical. Made big run after big run. It's been a great battle between him and Cooper Gindorf. No doubt. You know, Gindorf is more, maybe, uh, I'd say higher end speed. And, you know, it seems like uh, Hudson yeah. more between the tackles kind of style. It's been a great matchup. Yeah, you get Gindorf in the flats and you're not going to catch him. But right. this kid has been really shifty inside and great, showed great speed. They're going to line this up. It's going to be at the 43-yard field goal. Yeah. Big kick here. The kicker is a junior for the Spartans, number 28, Alex Farinez, attempting a 40. And we're going to ice the kicker here from Coach Koch, you think? Maybe. Don't jump on sides. Yeah. They did ice the kicker. 43. That's a long way in high school football. You would almost have to be a potential collegiate kicker to make this or a really good soccer player, right? I mean, just – it's a long way. Now, we need a rules expert in here because I'm a little rusty on this and on if they can just use consecutive timeouts because they, they have all three of them. They can call them till they lose them. They can call them till they lose them. So, um, kind of makes you wonder what Coach Koch will do here if he'll burn his other two, if he'll just let them go this time. Well, speaking of rules official on a play like this, can't we put a guy deep in the end zone like Auburn did against Alabama and uh, if the kick falls short, he gets to run it back? I, you could. And I, the, I, I would, would nominate maybe uh, Carson Wall. Carson Wall, <laughs> Cooper Dinsor. I wouldn't mind seeing a little auto back there either. Auto I wouldn't Carson mind seeing Wall, auto back yeah. there either. So any one of those guys can be capable. But honestly, the truth is that is a, a good idea, Jason. Uh, Otto and his dad, when Otto was about 9 or 10, they made a bet. That when there you Otto go. Was, That's exactly what they're doing. Who they said? Doing? Look at that. They made a bet that uh, when Otto it's was Daly. 16. It looks like Daly heading back there. Huh. All right. So the junior uh, corner, William Daly, is going to be that man back deep. He can possibly return this. Baronez. That's just assuming it's short, right? This guy could knock this field goal in. From 43. Long snap here. Snaps away. Hold is down. Kick is away. It's going to be short. It's, not it's going to be yeah, way short. Go and we're going to overtime. What a ball game. Water. He kind of knuckleballed that one, boy. Mustangs feel fortunate. Now, I mean, if you – I guess if you're, if you're Coach Koch, do you want to start offensively since your defense has just been out there? Or do you, what do you think the strategy – because I guess typically you're going to – you want to start defense first so you know what you need. But what, what do you think the strategy is here for Coach Koch? Well, I tell you, Jason, I would think you'd want to play offense the way the defense has been on the field like that. But, you know, when you're coaching, you sometimes forget those kind of things. You know, like how often your guys have been out there, who's the last one out there. You just kind of go back to your mentality say, hey, let's stop them, right? But, you know, if, you're, if you've are if you been out there a long time, it's tough. If I was playing a mind game, I would I would want to play defense. Don't shock – don't be shocked that this goes into extra overtime too. <laughs> no. I, mean, I mean, somebody's going to have to go for two and uh, figure out how to win this thing. It's 11.50. Can we make it past the stroke of midnight, gentlemen? Oh, sure. Well, the Texas Tavern will. Texas Tavern's going to be there. Do you think they're watching at the yeah. Texas Tavern right this, now? They might have it on the screen here on YouTube, on, on the Vibe channel on YouTube. They should be. Get a little cheeseburger going. <laughs> Do they have a cigarette machine there, do you think? That's not my thing. I'm I don't know. I'm wondering. I don't, it's not my thing either. <laughs> All right. So, Coach Hammond and Coach Koch meeting at midfield with the officials. They're going to – right now, they're just going over the rules, making sure everyone is on the same accord. And what do you guys – what do you guys forecast? What do you think is going to happen here? Well, they're going to continue to pound the ball if you're seven legs. you got to let that guy can kind of control it and hope they hope they make it. You know, it's Gendorf, is he going to come back in this football game and make a play for the Mustangs? He's done it all in open space out there on the outside. This is really going to come down to who can physically win the battle up front. And it's just going to be tough because everybody out there is completely exhausted. All right, that was Merle texting us. I was afraid he was going to tell me to not talk about cigarettes anymore on a high school broadcast. <laughs> I mean, if you're Memorial here and you you end up on defense to start, do you just sell out against the run? Because I mean, they've proven they can get that uh, that they can get four to seven yards pretty much at every you know two out of three plays. Yeah, Coach Koch and the guys are out there on the field. It's interesting to discuss. It. They're talking just about what you're saying, Coach. Who wants the ball? 
I don't know if they really know. Right? Oh, we forget they started the game as captains because they were in such a lightning delay. Yeah. That's why they're out there on the field flipping the coin here. There was no ordinary captains like you see in any high school or college game uh, tonight. The coaches came off the field because we had so many lightning delays, decided to flip the coin. Now, of, a little history here. This is the first ever overtime game. So oddly enough, even though it's always close, this is the first time we've needed extra time. And if any Mustang uh, historians are out there, maybe you can you can put a comment in the YouTube uh, comment section. Who was the last team before Seven Lakes that the Mustangs opened the season with? Opened the season with. So it's been the past five years in a row, it's been Seven Lakes. I'll give you a hint. They're from Katy. They are from the Katy District. So... If, if, you, if you are a, a Mustang lifer fan, who was the last team that the Memorial Mustangs opened the season, season with before the Seven Lakes Spartans? Hmm. I'll reveal the answer at the end of the show. So stick around. That's interesting. <laughs> Seagull Ranch. Juice? Wow. Okay, Juice, you, you get a free uh, burger and, and, and chips at the tavern, man. That was, <laughs> yeah. you, you nailed it. It was the Cinco Ranch Cougars. At Texas Tavern, here we come, baby. TT. <laughs> 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 that is awesome. Well, here we go. We'll we're going to be revealed what the outcome it was. Looks like they're going to start on the north side of the field here. The bums are shifting. <laughs> they're still strong, by the way. I think I heard him say Seven Lakes ball is what I heard, I believe. So I think Seven Lakes will start offensively. So you didn't get your wish as far as maybe letting that Memorial defense get, get a little bit of rest. They're going to have to go right back out there. Yeah, the, you know, they took a little while to flip this coin that here helped. and get that yeah. situation. I mean, four or five minutes out here is just huge right now. I think that might have been some gamesmanship from the 31-year from the veteran Gary Koch to kind of, you know, extend that talk a little bit. No doubt. <laughs> they were out there for a while. He's probably asking a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah. How's this work again? <laughs> yeah. Wait, can you confirm for me what we Exactly. <laughs> right. No, I'm not warming up a lefty in the bullpen right now. <laughs> just so you'll I'm know. I'm just talking. <laughs> Seven Lakes will start at the 25-yard line here. The bums need to shift down here a little bit. They're over there at the 40-yard line. Oh, okay. it's, it's early in the season for the bums, too. They're yeah. not quite in mid-season. Yeah. Exactly wow. right. All right, some here those, we go. Some of those guys haven't lost their summer weight either. They look bad in those tank tops. 11.55 and everybody's still chirping. All right, tight end and wing back at the top of the formation. Going to motion the fullback dang across. He's going to return to the top. There's going to be a stretch play to start it off. That's Jake Ferris finding a little bit of a seam, and he's going to be eventually brought down by a combination of the senior Cade West and also number 20 or uh, number 27 Anderson Strait. And Ferris just reaches. Once they get that block on that stretch play, he gets through that gap, and he's really tough to stop. Ten yards on the first play, and he's really just kind of willed their whole offense here in the second half. And for those that do not know, if, if if Seven Lakes was to score, Memorial still has a chance to answer. So it, it, it's, it's not sudden death here in these overtime rules in high school. All right, under center, that was a first down uh, gain there. Going to run the, the power toss play again. That's Ferris fighting forward, spinning, getting out of a tackle, and eventually going to be brought down. Eventually, finally, by, again, number 27, makes the final tackle, Anderson Strait. That was Ferris all the way. I mean, that was a 10-yard run, back-to-back 10-yard -back runs. And look, just ran through tackle and never kept moving his legs there. And all of a sudden, the Spartans got the ball at the four-yard line, first and four. The Mustangs are going to have to gamble a little bit here on defense. Find that fullback and stunt somebody to that side because that's where they're going. Agreed. Uh, first and goal from the four-yard line. Number 35 will lead you to the football. They're even heavier now. Look at it. They brought in an extra fullback. That's, yeah. that's their defensive lineman, Satin Hayes, is coming at fullback. They're going to send him in motion. They're going to run an ISO play. Barrett Hudson. Barrett Hudson pounded it right there. A very yeah. important kick coming up here, Juice. Yeah, no kidding. It's, man, give the Spartans credit there. Three plays to get that ball in. And it, it, that's what we were talking about earlier in the, you know, in the intermission there. Do you want to take offense or defense first? And boy, I'm not trying to knock the Mustangs, but they looked a little gas right there. Yeah, I think I, I think Coach Koch probably agreed with us. He probably just lost that coin flip. And yeah. Coach Hammond trying to was thinking the same thing. All right, Farinez set to attempt the extra point. Snap is down. Pressure coming. Great effort to try to get the block from number 42. That's Eddie G. Almost got there, but just short. And so our score is going to be 35-20. Let's just stay here with it. Uh, again, Gray almost gets the block on the extra point, but it's 35-28. What do you think the, uh, the 
What's going on the sideline right now for the Mustangs? Well, one thing you got to understand, the Spartans are just as tired on defense, right? So the offense has the upper hand here. You know where you're going. you got the opportunity to make the play. And don't be shocked if the Mustangs don't punch it in here. Anything but negative plays right here. No penalties. Correct. Especially to start off this first deal, the Spartans got a big 10-yard play on their first play. Let's just see what Salters does. And again, for anyone new to this this style, they, they have to match. So if field goal does them no good, the Mustangs must get into the end zone and either match or go for two. All right, here we go. They're going to pull the left guard around. There's penetration on the backside. Penetration coming from number 95 for the Spartans. That's what you just talked about, Jason. Can't have a negative play. That's the senior defensive end, Trip Cox. Man, Trip Cox just did a great job. A great penetration. Gerdoff didn't really have a chance there. They've been running that stretch play couple times tonight and bouncing it to the outside and there's a sub coming in uh 56 it looks like he's a little bit shaken up the left tackle uh that's the senior blake ratliff and checking into the game is number 66 jeffrey munoz the junior salters is gonna have to make a play and i'd love to see him make a play with his legs as well he had that one turnover over in the first half but he's very very capable of getting this ball downfield it's a new corner covering van we at the bottom of the screen Nine seconds on the play clock. We're going to fake the handoff. It's a bootleg. Pressure comes. Top has his dead. Intercepted. And that'll do it. Coach Hammond's telling him just to go down. Smart play. Don't, don't risk the fumble. Seven Lakes is going to win this ball game. The pass was deflected and eventually intercepted. I'm trying to see the number there. I think that was number 24. I've called that name a couple times in the second half. That was the junior, Keaton Fowler-Smith. Good job by the linebacker to get in the passing lane, get the deflection, and the safety Fowler Smith gets the interception. He was a great play and a great football game, but him, Smith made an unbelievable throw. You know, Salters was running out to, to the left side again and trying to turn it out there and throw, and they tipped that ball and caught it. But, boy, what a way to start the season for both teams. And give Seven Lakes credit. They seemed dead in the, late in the fourth quarter and bounced back and won this deal in overtime. Look at that. Is that Cooper Gindorf right there at the front of the handshake line? Man, you look at that. He just played a – Left it all out there in the field, but he's the first man up, showing the sportsmanship. And, I mean, if, if you're a Memorial fan, or I'm sure you're a Memorial fan tuning in, man, I see a lot of good things, too. I mean, of course you want to win this game, but this it's it's a process. It's a process, and the big deal is your young guys really came on in the second half, and you learn a lot about yourself in a football game like this. You never want to walk off, you know, with the, with the L, but, boy, I tell you, Seven Lakes and Memorial very evenly matched, and, it's, you know, it went right down to the wire. Yeah, we turned the ball over three times. They did not. Um, the third quarter, however, was fantastic for Memorial. Uh, the effort they put up on both sides of the ball came back, you know, erased a deficit, uh, did, it up, did it by scoring and then by a great defensive stop. Um, lot, to, lot to build on. Very young team. I think, we've, I think we started putting people in positions tonight um, to some degree. I think some of these younger guys are going to see the field a little more than, a little more than we thought they might. Yeah, great analysis. I mean, yeah, several sophomores did step up, but that'll do it. Uh, our final score, and they've turned off the scoreboard already because they're ready to get out of here, but I think it, a 35-28 in overtime is going to be your final scores. The Mustangs, they're going to head straight to the bus because it's late. Kids got school tomorrow, but thank you for a, a great first broadcast. This is just the first of many. We'll be here every single game of the season. Any final thoughts, fellas, that you want to say before we sign off for the last time? No, just a terrific football game, Jason. Coach, great to do it with you guys. And the Mustangs will probably bounce back. They got a tough one next week, Pearland, right? Yep. Star staring down the Oilers. All right. So we'll be, we'll be back next week to bring you more Mustangs football against the Pearland Oilers. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you all down the road. All right. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye.